professional football on CBC. Brought to you by Canadian Pacific, owned by Canadians, working for Canadians. KTEL International, specialists in household and leisure time products. Labatt's Breweries of Canada Limited, brewers of Labatt's 50 Ale and Labatt's Blue. One of the best drawing sports clubs in all of North America, behind only the likes of the Rams, the Lions, the Giants. Since moving here to the Big O Olympic Stadium, the Owls have averaged 60,000 fans per game. Tonight is no exception as they play interlocking conference football against the BC Lions. Hello again, everybody. I'm Tom McKee reporting to you from the sidelines of both clubs throughout tonight's game. At stake for BC sole possession of first place in the Western Conference of the CFL. For Montreal, a win tonight gives them a tie for the lead in the East. The hurting Owls are regaining their health the Lions have some hot shot rookies to watch. And more about that with Don Chevrier. All right, Tom. Indeed, the Montreal Alouettes have been crippled by injury since the very first game of the season, a game they lost to the Ottawa Rough Riders. But after a 12-day rest, it appears to be all coming back together for head coach Joe Scanella and the Montreal Alouettes. With Sonny Wade on the injured list, they brought a new quarterback in, not new to them. Larry Lawrence was a training camp, went to the Pittsburgh Steelers, and is now back with Montreal to back up tonight's starter Joe Barnes at quarterback. Then, of course, is a big fellow named Brett Watson, a 10th-round draft choice of the National Football League. He chose Montreal instead, 6'5", 255. He'll be playing offensive right tackle tonight. Peter Dallariva was injured in the very first Alouette game that lost to Ottawa. He broke his hand, and of course, Peter Dallariva is the best tight end in the country. He'll wear a cast to protect the hand tonight and will be in action. And Junior R.U. is also back to terrorize CFL quarterbacks from his defensive end position. R.U. has been battling a stubborn groin injury. Well, the BC Lions are indeed an exciting team as they were a surprisingly exciting team in 1977. They've got a rookie in this year that may set the CFL on its ears. His name is Larry Key out of Florida State. He was, of course, well sought after by the BC Lions. He played for the U.S. College All-Stars in the inaugural Can-Am game in Tampa. Currently second among CFL rushers, east and west. And according to head coach Vic Rapp, he's the quickest back that Rapp has ever seen in Canada. So keep your eye on Larry Key in this ballgame tonight. And we'll be back with Russ Jackson and Montreal quarterback Joe Barnes in just a moment. Billy Joel is one of the hot ones. I love you just the way you are. The Hot Ones, a sizzling new double album featuring number one from Andy Gibb. I just want to be your man. Red Hot ARS. Fiery Eruption. Blue Rolls, Toulouse, KC and the Sunshine Band. Tease, Gene Cotton, BJ Thomas, and Player. Paul Nicholas. Ian Thomas Band. Jimmy Buffett. the intense heat of the Hot Ones, a double-album superset. Now available wherever fine records are sold. Montreal quarterback Joe Barnes has had quite a few problems in the last few ball games with his throwing hand. Joe, what actually has been the problem? Well, uh, start off the second game of the season against Toronto, I chipped a bone in on the index finger, and uh, that gave me some problems. Then, uh, so that bothered me for a while. And then the next week, I tried to play against Hamilton, and was doing all right until I uh, dislocated my little finger on the throwing hand. So, but both of them are improving, and you know, hope to have another good game tonight. Has it hampered your game plan and your selection of plays? Do you think? No, because you know we feel like uh, you know I've been able to throw the ball, and you know I've been able to put the, you know, a little bit on on the ball. So, uh, really hadn't hampered the, the game plan at all. Okay, you started out with Sonny Wade and yourself sort of sharing the quarterback. Sonny was announced as being number one. How do you feel now in preparing for a ball game when you know you're number one and you've got to do the job out there? Well, you know, it, uh, it's a challenge to me. And I, you know, I really look forward to it and get myself ready, uh, you know, to lead this team, uh, you know, hopefully to another Great Cup championship. Last year, you know, I was off to a great start and then got hurt and, you know, missed the Great Cup. So uh, I'm ready to 
to start where I left off last year. Well, Joe, thank you very much, and good luck tonight against the BC Lions. I know it's kind of tough to play these teams once because you don't really get a lot of time to prepare. <laughs> the BC Lions, head coach Vic Graff has said that Jerry Taggy's having a much better year this year. He feels he's reading the defenses much better than he did last year, and because of this, he is, has thrown eight touchdown passes in the first five ball games that BC has played. Certainly, the Montreal defense has been very stingy against the run, allowing only 90 yards per game in the first five games. So if Jerry Taggy holds a hot hand, he could put a lot of pressure on the Montreal club tonight. All right, Russ, and now we're ready for Mr. Roger Doucette and the singing of our national anthem. again is rewritten the national anthem of that extra line of his. We'll be right back with the opening kickoff from Montreal in just a moment. Montreal, a crowd of 60,000 plus, ready for the Alouettes of the BC Lions. Leon Bride and Larry Key, their cousins, standing back on the goal line to await Don Sweet's kickoff. The referee is Blair Shallow, and it's underway, East versus West. The Lions and the Alouettes. Leon Bright mishandles the football. A flag is down. Bright charging out across the 30-yard line to about the 32, where Dickie Harris brought him down after a 27-yard kickoff return. The penalty marker is down near the 15-yard line. Ross Perrier, Jim King, Bill Jones, and Bob Sugden are the other officials working with Blair Shallow, the referee. And below the waist against BC, number 31. First down. Blocking below the waist against the British Columbia Lions. As you heard the referee tell you, that's against Larry Holt. So they'll bring it back. That rule, of course, for punt returns and kickoffs is above the waist blocking only. The intent of it, naturally, is to try to reduce the chance of injury. It's awfully hard, Russ, for a player to remember which play he's executing at the time. What kind of block to throw? Well, now they've got them both the same, Don, that you have to block above the waist on the punt return and the kickoff return. It helps someone. Leon Bright is far right. The quarterback, Jerry Taggy, for the British Columbia Lions from their own eight-yard line. He fires left and is picked off of the sidelines. Burroughs got a Montreal touchdown in the first play of the ball game. Jim Burroughs stole the ball and walked in from 12 yards away. Here it is again, Russ. Well, Jerry Taggy sending all his backs going to the right. No fake at all. Certainly the play was to go that way as the line pulled out, but he seemed to lay the ball up there. The ball hung in the air a long time. And Burrow, who had moved back, 
to cover Al Shrook, stepped in front of him, and just trotted into the end zone from about 15 yards out. But Jerry Tagge didn't have much on that ball as he tried to lay it out to Al Shrook, and Burrow was right there to take it in, and that's a fine start for the Alouettes. They lead by six. Don Sweet will endeavor to make it seven right here. He does. Montreal seven. The British Columbia Lions no score. The football game is 29 seconds old. I wonder if that's a record for the quickest. Touchdown, wow. but again, Taggy going out here to throw that ball. Number 68, John Blaine, the right guard, had pulled out in front of him. And as we mentioned in the first rerun of this, the ball seemed to hang up in the air. Now Chirac moving away from the ball, not coming back towards it, allowed Burrow to step in front of him and take it away and go into the end zone. A 12-yard touchdown by Burrow. The Alouette's cornerback. That's got to give these Alouettes a tremendous lift here playing at home to score quickly in that fashion. Well, I'm sure the BC Lions would like to have the national anthem all over again and start this game from scratch. Roll it back at Q. Roger Doucet. <laughs> There's Joe Barnes. When the Alouettes get the ball offensively, he'll be the man who'll direct them. Despite suffering the broken bones, the back of his hand, finger injury, Joe Barnes is going to be ready. He was very relaxed before the game when I talked to him, interviewed him, and chatted with him for a while, and very confident now that he has the starting job and knows it's his to do the work now and do the job. So, Don Sweet all over again, just as he did a few moments ago, will kick to Leon Bright on the right side, the 10-yard line. Leon Bright churning out of the air near the 40, and will be pushed out of bounds to the Montreal bench short of the 40-yard line. Nicky Harris again with the Montreal tackle after Bright brought it back 28 yards. Line of scrimmage is going to be the 37-yard line of British Columbia as they start in arrears by seven points. Harry Holt, number 31. Larry Key in the backfield, number 11. Terry Bailey, 36. Leon Bright, 26. Al Sharouk is the split end. Wide receiver Richard Appleby is the tight end, number 72. Here's Taggy again, hoping for better luck this time. for maybe a yard, no more than that, by Clifton Alapa, number 70, a defensive end for Montreal. Larry Kiras had one big game to start the season. Since then, has uh, been contained better by CFL defenses and is number two in overall rushing in the country. But he does carry a 4.8 average in his ballgame, Don, which is pretty good for a rookie, or anybody. Second down and nine and a half. Key again breaks out for a BC first down to the Lions 51 yard line. He picked up 14 yards in the play. Tony Proudfoot, number 23, cut him down. That's the kind of move that Key can put on you. Well, He's the quite... type of play we expect to see for the BC Lions. Al Shrook going downfield here, or Bright going down trying to get a block is the draw on the screen. Taggy wants to throw that ball, but he's going to have to keep that front four honest by throwing the screens and draws, the draw that time to keep. Key again. Nowhere to go. He'll lose a couple back at the 49-yard line. Carl Grinnell coming through there, along with Glenn Weir and Gordon Judges, the two defensive tackles. It is going to be second down and will make it 12 for the British Columbia Lions from the 49-yard line. The Montreal defense, led by people like Chuck Zapek right here, Judges, Alapa, Weir, and now are you back in the lineup, has been very stingy against the rush this year. One of the best performances, if not the best, of any defensive team against the running game in the CFL. So perhaps, as Russ says, the Lions may have to go to the air despite their disastrous start in that area at the outset of the ball game. Taggy will throw on second down. Pops it out. It is not caught by holding it. One hand on it. That's all. There's a flag down, Don, and we may have a penalty here, although the BC Lions punting team seems to be coming in. And now they're heading off the field. Again, on that particular play, Taggy didn't seem to throw that ball with authority. He seemed to lay it up again. Threw it out there, Russ. It looked like he was throwing a balloon. The holding is against the Montreal. Second down is repeated. 
Holding against the defensive team, Montreal. So the Lions naturally take that, get second down over. Now two to go. He might pick it up here somewhere. Well, on the left side here, as we're going downfield, a good move there by Alapa coming in. And whether the holding was downfield, Don, it didn't seem to be at the line of scrimmage. It Maybe was. one of the receivers downfield was being held. It was over on the sideline is where the marker was dropped. So somebody was held up. It gives the Lions a new life. Second and two. Taggy and through the hands of his tight end, Appleby, who it appeared could have made the catch right there. Would have been a big catch too for the Lions. Well, a good throw. Appleby coming across, a little crossing pattern with number 36, Terry Bailey. Well, we'll see if he should have caught the ball or not. The last Bailey, going here. Bailey going downfield and Utech chasing him. And there we have Appleby coming underneath there and should have caught that ball, hit him in a bad spot. Concentration, that's the name of the game. Louis Vesaglia, the BC putter. 47 yard average. Now Wilson will snap the ball back to him. It's low. It is blocked. Gabriel Gregoire blocks the kick. It is passed on by Ty Morris. That was Friesen coming through. Got a piece of the ball. And again, the Montreal defense has come through with a big play. They'll go from the 37 yard line when play resumes in just a moment as the Owls lead the Lions 7 to nothing. This is the famous Art Center College, where we teach many of the world's great car designers. And this is the new Chevrolet Malibu. For years, I've been telling my students, make their cars smaller on the outside, bigger inside, more efficient. Looks like somebody was listening. Back here, more leg and headroom than last year, and plenty of comfort up front. And yet it takes less space on the road. The new family size Malibu, beautiful. You people at home can be the putter from the end zone, standing beside, behind Pisagni. The snap was a little low, but number 47, Jerry Friesen, was just allowed to come right up the middle, got the ball and the kicker, and now Joe Barnes in there for the first time. Throwing complete, John O'Leary at the BC 10-yard line. There's Friesen who blocked the kick to set the Alouette offense into motion again. Well, Joe Barnes going right to work here now, saying the defense has done their share so far tonight. First play, does a good job of getting back and good protection. No pressure on him. Plenty of time for look to look for O'Leary, number 30, down on the sideline, and he stepped out of bounds on the 10. He beat Doug Carlson, number 28. So they have the ball at the 11-yard line for a Montreal first down. They can get a first down without scoring a touchdown. a great caller in man-to-man -man defense. Joe Barnes goes back. Grady Kavnis has starts. The Kavnis will get blocked by O'Leary. We don't see it there. He is over there being blocked. Right there you see him on the ground and that allowed Starch to be all alone because Kavnis had that first man out of the backfield. Starch on this occasion and he just couldn't stay with him. So here's Don Sweet again with a Montreal point after touchdown attempt. Tilio holds for him. It is through. It is now a two-converted touchdown lead by the Alouettes over the Lions by a score of 14-0. 
This game is only four minutes and 26 seconds old. From the end zone, we might get a chance to see this block, but Kavnis, the free man in the backfield, has to take that first man out. And he is blocked by O'Leary. It's thrown behind the line of scrimmage, meaning he can block. O'Leary got a good block on Kavnis, and that's why no one was even close to number 32 as he went in for the second major for Montreal early in this first quarter. Russ, amazingly, the Alouettes have only had two plays from scrimmage. First touchdown, a defensive move. The other one set up by another fine defensive play. There's Ken Starch, who scored the TD. The Alouettes played the Lions in their first preseason game this year, scored uh, uh, 15 uh, points. The Lions did. The Owls only had nine, a 15-9 win. And tonight, on the first four and a half minutes, Montreal has racked up 14 already. An explosive start here before a huge Olympic Stadium crowd. Last night, the Expos coming through against the Los Angeles Dodgers right here in this park. That game was televised nationally in the United States. And we welcome our coast-to-coast -coast audience here in Canada for the Lions and the Alouettes tonight from Montreal. Hope you're enjoying it wherever you are across the country. Well, somebody was saying that the 12-day layoff might hurt the Alouettes. There is no sign of that having any effect whatsoever. Here's Don Sweet. This is Leon Bright. And he's rolled back at the 26-yard line by Ian Mofford as Jerry Friesen came in to support Mofford. There's no question the Lions have run into a real buzzsaw in the person of the Montreal Alouettes tonight. The Alouettes as high as a kite for this ball game. Taggy will lead them out from the 27th, first down. tripped up under a full head of steam and comes down on the 35-yard line. That'll be an eight-yard game. Junior RU back in action for the Alouettes having missed three games. Cut him down. There is Junior who has shaved his mustache and now people have trouble telling RU and Cliff did a lap apart. Unless they wear their sweaters. Or unless Junior does his uh, fire dance <laughs> act in the locker room. You know, only one man on this team can do that. <laughs> Larry Key popping through for about five, which is approximately his average in the CFL, as Russ stated earlier. That'll give the BC Lions a first down for their 40 yard line as Clifton Alapa made the Montreal tackle. You have to look back at the big plays and Appleby dropping that ball that was thrown well to prevent the BC Lions from maintaining possession and the block kick. Hope tumbling forward for about three at the 43 yard line was tripped up by Glenn Weir, defensive tackle number 64. Well, the BC Lions have hopes of a new stadium to play in, in the near future. There's a story on Harry Holt into his second game of the Lions. A uh, plan has been unveiled on the West Coast for a stadium and complex costing $163 million. And at halftime or later in the game, we'll have more on that. Jimmy Young has gone in to replace Appleby. Recall Appleby dropped that pass a few plays ago. So Young is in the lineup now, tight end. Missed fire in the line. Two flags are down. Here's the pass to Jimmy Young. It is knocked away. Almost picked up on the rebound by Randy Rhino. Tony Proudfoot was there to knock it down against Jimmy Young. John, I'm starting to wonder about Jerry Taggy's arm. He seems to be laying that ball up a little bit. Even that one he didn't get out there. The one that was intercepted and one that wasn't complete on the sideline. Right, against Montreal. Second down repeated. You hear the offside call, but Taggy has not been throwing that ball with authority out there. Whether it's the rush, whether he's not getting set up, I don't know. But uh, maybe Tom can keep an eye on that. Well, he doesn't have very much time to get the ball away. He's got to hurry it. Even that uh, one that was down through the middle that was dropped by Appleby. He was looking around. He looked as if he was a little bit rattled on the play. So maybe that uh, maybe that interception right off the <laughs> bat has left him with some mental scars right now that don't have to shake out. Let's see what they do right here on second down and about two and a half. Two tight ends for the Lions, short yardage offense. They're going to go with Larry Key, and Key will provide them with a first down as he got across the 50-yard line. 
Good advance of three. Key tonight is 20 yards at five carries for British Columbia. There's no question the Lions have to be rattled somewhat, Russ, after the start they have fallen into here. This uh, tremendous defensive attack by Montreal that led to two very quick touchdowns. And now here's Appleby who came back into the last play down on one knee. Well, they've got Jimmy Young, the jack of all trades, who can come in and play all these positions. In fact, they're so thin at linebacker, they say all oh, this week, Jimmy Young has even been practicing at the linebacker spot, and if one of the linebackers did get hurt, we could see him there. He was there at workouts in Vancouver this week. A very versatile football player. Joey Taggy is yet to complete a pass. He's had the one picked up by Jim Burrell for Montreal's first touchdown. And Byron's found starts for Montreal's second touchdown. Right now, the Lions from the 51-yard line, trailing 14-0, have a first down. a lap I think got a hand on it as Taggy was dumped unceremoniously in the backfield by Glenn Weir. We'll find out from referee Blair Shallow about this infraction. It appears to be a holding penalty against the BC Lions. We'll find out when the professional football returns in just a moment. Every time you mix a drink you've got an 80% chance of doing a good job. See this? Four-fifths of your drink is mixer. And no matter what you're mixing it with, that four-fifths is going to make or break the taste of your drink. That's why you should be using Canada Dry mixers for every drink you make. Because it's no secret Canada Dry makes better mixers. So don't take chances with taste. You can't lose when you use Canada Dry mixers anytime, all the time. We're getting set to go now after a holding call against the Lions. It takes the ball back to the 40 where it's first and 20. Leon Bright has about seven yards before he was rolled back by Chuck Zapek. Left corner linebacker for Montreal, so it's going to be second down and 13 for British Columbia. Zapek again made the stop. A 17-yard gain for Dirty 30, as he's called. Jerry Taggy getting much better protection this time as he goes back. And Jim Young, who's come in to replace Richard Appleby, the tight end goes downfield. Alternate receiver out on the sideline all alone. Chuck Zapek not back deep enough to take that pass away. getting battered around Zapex in the middle of that play and some punches come out from Zapex who was on the ground directed up toward Key. Proudfoot was there along with Chuck Zapex to defend. Not there separated. Nothing comes of it. Well from ground level with Key going in off tackle here he gets hit by Proudfoot and Zapex then gets him down there and they're treating him rather roughly down there. Cornell came in he felt I believe a little late. Well, he's uh, giving us a preview of the Alley Sphinx fight with Rudy Florio. <laughs> and we'll preview baseball tomorrow night. The Dodgers and the Expos right here on the National Network. We'll be in Detroit for the Blue Jays and the Tigers with Tom McKee and Tony Kubek tomorrow night. So watch for it for the game in your area. Flags been thrown. Taggy fires the pass to Jimmy Young. He's wide open into the end zone. He goes. It'll be a touchdown depending on the infraction. Don, I think Junior Ayu jumped offside. He hasn't played for a while. He's been out with the injuries, and he seemed to be a little anxious. It is good. It is good. A 44-yard touchdown. 
Montreal, IU was offside. Here it is again, the scoring play for the Lions. Well, from the end zone, this is the one they tried to hit Young on earlier in the game, down the middle, and it was knocked down. This time, went right through the hands of the defender here. Young showing good concentration, caught the ball, took it into the end zone, and these BC Lions have moved the ball very well in two successive drives, and are right back into this ball game. Down 14-6, Louis Pisanglia will endeavor to narrow that to a one touchdown differential, which he does. And so with four minutes and 52 seconds left in the first quarter at the Olympic Stadium, it is now a 14-7 Montreal lead over the British Columbia Lions as the Lions on that play and that drive appear to regain their composure and came right back to get into it again. Done last year when these two clubs played on a wet night out in B.C., the Lions won 18-17 and there was only one touchdown scored. Basaglia kicked six field goals that night to tie a record and score all the B.C. points to lead them to that one-point victory. Well, Tonight, we're getting all kinds of touchdowns early. People here thought this could either be a real uh, defensive battle or an exciting offensive show, and the latter has proven to be true in the first 10 minutes and 8 seconds of play. To be young with two catches for a total of 61 yards, and the Lions' touchdown has made it 14-7. And that is the story on the British Columbia scoring drive. Exactly his kickoff. The first one the Alouettes have accepted tonight. Ian Mofford from the goal area. Runs headlong into a BC delegation led by Richardson, number 77. Got it back 23 yards and will enable the Alouettes to start from their own 22 yard line. First down, the ball between the 22 and the 23. Looking at Pat Bonnet, the Montreal center, coming up. Well, number 54, Glenn Leonard coming downfield here now. And number 47, Friesen, and then Jackson gets at it, and there's some hard feelings out there early in this ball game. Russ, a man can have no respect for his hands if he continues to throw them <laughs> at somebody's face guard like that. And with a name like Jackson, you wouldn't think he'd do that. No, you won't find Joe Barnes doing that. No, sir. his way through to about the 28. A late penalty marker has been dropped at the conclusion of that play. It appears to be against the, the L. The rep, this is against BC number 32 well, with the BC. first down Montreal. Against the defensive team, the BC Lions, unnecessary roughness. Brady Cadmus, number 32, plays that rover spot, spot or free man in that secondary. is recognized as a big hitter on this defensive, in the defensive secondary. Likes to intimidate people. That time, he picked up the penalty. A rather unnecessary one because the play really had finished. A long way from where Cadmus was stationed. Under pressure, gets it away to Bob Gaddis. And Gaddis stretches out near the 50 yard line, does not have a first down. The game five to six. Paul Girode, number 40, made the tackle for the Lions. Now Gaddis, number 22, coming downfield, just all the other receivers going down, clearing out the area with the BC and zone defense. And number 40, Girode came up and put the hit on him and hung on with some help from Frank Oliver, number 17. Brock Ainsley heading wide right. Gattis, who just got that pass on the left side. Now it is second down, about four. The receiver wasn't there. It might have been Gattis who hadn't turned around, or this man, O'Leary, who hadn't reached the area yet, but it's incomplete. And it goes to third down and four, Montreal. And so the Alouettes will likely be putting when play resumes here with a 14-7 Montreal lead. It'll resume in just a moment. The challenge of the unknown. Some men go out of their way to find it. But one thing they won't take a chance on is the way they look. So they use Brill Cream. Brill Cream conditions hair. Keeps it looking healthy. Natural. Keeps you confident you're looking your best. Brill Cream. For men who'll take a chance on just about anything but the way they look. A 
This will be the first putt for Wally Blotto of Montreal tonight. Putting to Ken Hinton and Leon Bright stationed between the 5 and the 10-yard line of the Lions. Blotto edging the 45-yard mark. And a seasonal putting average for the Alouettes. Hangs it high, but not deep. This is Bright moving up, waiting for it to bounce. It hit a lion blocker, and so Bright picks it up and gets it back about a couple of yards. The ball bounded off the leg of number 61, Doug Seymour, so Bright had to be quick to make sure it wasn't left loose very long. A 36-yard punt by Buono, and so the Lions will originate this series of plays from the 28-yard line, their own, trailing 14-7. Two minutes and 53 seconds showing until quarter time. There's Tony Proudfoot, the veteran Montreal defender. Tony looks as if he is in some kind of pain when he came off the field after that last sequence favoring his left arm. We'll keep an eye on it down here. On the counter, that is Terry Bailey, number 36, getting up around the 20 the 33 yard line he's more than halfway to the first down he's got about six there junior are you made the stop another look at proudfoot they're working on him on the sidelines sort of a splinter shield or cast on that left arm you know it's amazing how well the alouettes have done considering the string of injuries they won three games out of five and now have many of their top personnel back from the injured list very key defender and the speed of the lion ball carrier and it's a 65 yard gain as key is either exhausted or injured over there at the far sidelines the lions trainers out to have a look at him down a real dangerous type of pass with taggy throwing that ball laterally to key if he drops the ball it's free for anybody to pick up i think he's probably just winded down there but he's showing us what he showed the fans out west in his first ball game that he's going to be an exciting addition to this league and certainly is going to add a lot to this offense of the BC Lions to go along with the passing of Jerry Taggy. But here we'll have the ball thrown back, and if he drops this, it's free. And they hung up Weir and IU inside, broke inside here, and beat number 21, Randy Rhino, who had a bad pursuit angle. And here it became the foot race, and Harris played this very well about now. Tried to give a little shift here, tried to slow him down, but Harris played it very well, and he has exceptional speed himself to grab him inside the five-yard line. Well, they ruled he stepped out just prior to that. He's got him back at the eight-yard line now, and that's where the Lions will start first and goal to goal. <laughs> Al Sharouk made the catch at the four, and then I think they'll give him the four-yard line. He went back around the five in the grasp of Ty Morris. So it's going to be second down at four, B.C. Well, from the ground level, a little rollout here. Al, Al Sharuk, who's got 24 passes this year, the leading receiver for the B.C. Lions, catches his 25th here to match his number, didn't gain too much, tried to break him underneath, sending everybody deep, but Montreal did a good job of covering. Tough to hear those audibles down there with this crowd yelling. A flag has been thrown. The play has been stopped. It is a delay of game call against the BC Lions. They took too long to put the ball in the play. Well, we'll give the crowd that one because they started yelling and Taggy wanted to call an audible down there, tried to wait it out. The crowd didn't let up. And in this stadium, everything comes right down to the field level. It just reverberates right down at you. You wind up going home and that crowd still ringing in your ears for half a day after you've left the stadium. <laughs> Sagley a half out in the field. He doesn't know where to go. Trying to find out which down it is. <laughs> well, here he down. Comes. well, Dickie Harris takes a pretty good shot here. And Al Sharuk. Hello. The down is being repeated. But of course, the penalty takes it back now to the nine yard line. The Sagley is in as a receiver. Intended for Al Sharuk, double coverage on him. 
Zapek and Ty Morris were there. Well, I think they were reading that that was going to be a man-to-man -man coverage. They played zone. Zapek gave the help back there. They tried a little pick pattern out there with Sharuk coming from the inside, going outside, but with the zone coverage, just impossible to complete. Third down from the 90-yard line, and now Pasaglia is in for Rio as the field goal man for the Lions with 37 seconds to go in the first quarter. The attempt will come from the 16-yard line, and Pasaglia's got it. And that will reduce the Alouette margin to four points as the Lions now make it 14 to 10. Don, I think it was important for the Lions with the Alouettes getting those quick 14 points in the first five minutes of this ball game that they maintained their poise, that they did not panic, and they stayed with their game plan. And I'm sure that's what Jerry Taggy is doing. And that's what happens when you get a veteran who's had some NFL experience as well as his second year in the CFL. And they did not panic, and they're right back in this ball game. We've got quite a ball game going for us tonight. I want to remind you tomorrow night, the Expos and the Dodgers on the National Network across the country. And in Ontario, it'll be the Blue Jays and the Tigers from Detroit. Jays winners today of the Texas Rangers at home in Toronto for the second day in a row. Right now, Barnes from the 35 will direct the Montreal play. Bob Gaddis has about seven yards. Up around the 42, cut down by Paul Girodi, number 40. So it'll be second down and about two to go for Montreal. Well, from the ground level, we see Gaddis catching what we call a hitch pass in the trade. It's just a matter of he takes one step downfield, allows the quarterback to step back. He comes back, and it's almost just a lateral pass out to him. They try and get the offensive line outside in front of him, and he just gets as much as he can using his speed. at Montreal backfield now as Ainsley heads right. Ball is given to John O'Leary and he fights for and gets the Montreal first down. Well, I can remember the first time we came in here, Don, and they said that maybe those backs weren't good enough, but they've done a good job for Montreal. Sure have. At the end of the first quarter, the score is Montreal 14 and the BC Lions 10. A recent shell test showed many people didn't know what shape their cars were in. Out of 215 cars tested, 208 had problems. That's 97%. We found 179 cars had fluid level problems, 56 had electrical faults, and 44 had exhaust system problems. Problems that could lead to expensive repairs if not corrected early. That's why Shell wrote the early warning book. One in a series of helpful books, free from Shell. Shell helps. Hey, look at that. It's a chainsaw in its case. Uh-oh, somebody left it. Probably taking a coffee break. It's a McCulloch Mac 140. Wow. It's got automatic oiling. That's slick. This is the chain brake safety feature. Yeah, yeah. It stops the chain in less than a tenth of a second. That's fast. And look at these teeth. They sharpen themselves with a the press of a button. Mine don't. The McCulloch Mac 140. You can't buy another chainsaw with all these features at any price. That McCulloch's got just about everything. Yeah, but I bet it can't swim. Good point. McCulloch. In the yellow pages, under saws. The Bats Party Case, with Canada's favorite ale and lager. Back at Olympic Stadium in Montreal and at the Montreal Alouette bench, they feel, in fact, they have told us that Tony Proudfoot has broken his left arm in this game, so the problem with the Owls are not over yet. Joe Barnes got some problems right now as he is limited to about a three-yard game, but a penalty marker is down on the play as well. Here's Blair Shallow. Holding is against Montreal, number 61. That'll be first down repeat. Only called against Doug Pate. A rookie with the Alouettes, at least. Right guard. So that'll take it back to 
the area of the 36-yard line where it'll be down repeated. First down and now 20. And here's how the teams fared in the first quarter. That Lion offense really came on, 174 to 59. But Montreal's big damage, of course, was done defensively with a block punt and a pass interception that uh, scored one and led to another touchdown. 14-10 right now for the Alouettes in the second quarter. Fires the draw play to John O'Leary, and it's covered well by the Lion defenders. He reaches about the 43-yard line where Sam Gritz, the former Edmonton Eskimo and Hamilton Tiger cap linebacker, made the stop. He plays the middle for the Lions. Remember you saw Larry Key shaking up with that long run of his, and so they're taping up the left leg to get him back into action later. Might have popped the hamstring muscle there, where they're taping it up in the thigh area. He was going full tilt. He had to stop to get around Dickie Harris. Might have pulled something there. Second down and 13. That is a first down reception by Bob Gavis. At the Lion 52-yard line. The secret when you want to throw that ball is get good protection, and Barnes is getting good protection here. Threw the ball well to Gaddis, and number 18, Ken Hit, was just on the inside as the ball was thrown to the outside for a 15-yard gain. First down for the Lion 52. Montreal leads. Two minutes gone in quarter two by a score of 14 to 10. For the interception, but not coming up with it, was Ken Hinton, number 18, as the ball was overthrown for Brock Ainsley. I'll tell you, these teams are wide open on the throttle tonight, Russ, and giving us a lot of exciting football. Well, they talked earlier about this Montreal offense, that they were going to put that ball in the air, and tonight they are actually doing that. They're throwing the ball more, I think, of the three ball games we have seen them tonight than they have in the past, even when Sonny Wade started for them. They've only had three running plays offensively tonight. This will be second down and ten as Key tries to work off that muscle he may have pulled. defensively for the Lions on that occasion and he could not prevent a 14-yard gain a great catch by McMahon from well, McMahon number 32 who got a lot of experience while Peter Dallariva was out with that broken hand has really helped this offense and showed there what he can do if Peter can't go and McMahon going down Barnes under some pressure here as he sprints out to the right and does a good job of throwing this ball again away from the defensive end, Jimmy Young, who is right on McMahon's back. The tight end, Dallareva, stumbled, or he might have been able to catch up with that pass from Barnes, but it goes to second down. Della Reeve, of course, played there with a split on his left hand. I asked him before tonight's game whether that was going to have an effect. First of all, if they're going to use you as much, and if they do, will it bother you? Well, Tom, I, you know, I, I think I'm going to start and I'm going to play the whole game. I hope uh, to finish the whole game. I, I like to play the whole game. I feel pretty good. Uh, yes, I do have a splint uh, that, uh, that a trainer modified for me. I have to wear it for about four more weeks uh, until the hand, the hand really mends all well. Uh, but, it, you know, it, it shouldn't affect me at all. Uh, I have my fingers free. I just can't break my wrist, and it protects the back of my hand where I had the two uh, fractures. It should be all right, though. The Alouettes may have taken too long. They did. Blair Shallon, I was called one of those against each team, is going by the book on the clock. Jim Young has been filling in for Doug Carlson as a defensive back about the series. Time down. count is against Montreal. First down over, and we'll take a timeout now. So it's going to be first down over again, or the down at least repeated when play resumes in just a moment with a 14-10 Montreal lead. We'll be right back from Montreal. It's our hideaway where the 
Jackson and Tom McKee. This is Don Chevrier back with you from Montreal's beautiful Olympic Stadium as the Alouettes go from the 44-yard line of the Lions. Second down and 15. Can't stop. Runs out of playing field and reaches the 29-yard line where he's five shy of the first down. Was stopped by Joe Four Queen and Glenn Jackson. Well, they've got Jim Young in there playing that defensive secondary, and from ground level, we'll see Barnes going back here, and they're looking to work on Jim Young. They've gone at him twice prior to this particular play. He did a good job of covering this time, forcing Barnes to dump it off to number 32, Ken Starch, and the BC Lions content to let him run to the sideline, give him the seven or eight yards, and force them into a third down situation, and a field goal attempt by number 11, Mr. Sweet. That attempt is going to come from the Lions 41 yard line. Jerry Dottilio will hold. Sweet's got it. That makes him nine for 11 this season. He's having a good year again. Last year he went for many games without missing a field goal this year having another fine year and we have so many outstanding field goal kickers in the CFL then. indeed we do and the Alouettes on sweeps attempt that time from 41 yards away that was successful are reinstated into a one touchdown lead at 17 to 10 we have 10 and a half minutes to play until halftime Here's Larry Key at the bench of the B.C. Lions, and that was confirmed what you suspected, Ross. Indeed, a hamstring, and it happened on that long pass and run play that he had. He's in uh, pain. See if he go back into action. I doubt it right now. Tom, that's something that anybody with speed has to worry about. You and I and Don would never have to worry about pulling the hamstring muscle. We can't run fast enough. Not oh. that fast. Okay. <laughs> Hinton and Bright, they can certainly run fast enough. They're back there. Eases my stick off. Eases my mind knowing all that. <laughs> Never in doubt. Montreal will kick to the Lions from the 35 yard line. BC's choice. Again, Don Sweet. Drives right back to the 10. First into his own blocker, past him, and then taken down around the 36-yard line by Jerry Dottilio, Montreal. A 27-yard run back. Well, in isolation, we see Jerry Dottilio, the guy who did a great job of quarterbacking these Alouettes when both quarterbacks were hurt. He just keeps after the ball carrier, finally brings him down. He doesn't lose sight, stays in his feet. Slows his pace down, coming downfield as he gets closer to that ball carrier. An excellent special team man, Jerry Dutillier. Right going left, and Al Sharuk wide right for the BC Lions on first down. From the Lions, 36. Colt going nowhere. No gain on that play. You know, Rush, you talked about Dutillier, and indeed he was great that night when Wade and Barnes went down with injuries. And there's a lot of uh, people wondering here in Montreal as to why the Alouettes wouldn't give him a chance to be the backup man rather than bring in Larry Lawrence. Well, I think Coach Ganella last night said that he feels that Lawrence is a better football player at quarterback. And we'll talk about that a little more. But Glenn Weir, who is having another outstanding season on isolation, just puts his head down. And he does a pretty good job on number 64, Larry Watkins, to get in on that tackle. Here's Taggy throwing. It is a collision at the 50 yard line. I don't know how. Jimmy Young was able to hang on to the football, but he did. 
Now, Utec really put the wood to him as he came across there, but Young hung on to that ball, but he is heading for the sideline, and he knows that he's been hit. And I was talking to Utec earlier today, and he was saying that he and Al Shruk were great buddies out in BC as well as in Toronto, and he told Shruk to watch himself coming across the middle, and Shruk, after seeing that, may just start to pay attention. You saw Coach Rob ask him, are you okay, Jimmy? I don't think he got an affirmative response from him. <laughs> Taggy's five for eight. One picked off for a touchdown. Here's Holt. And Holt slashes through to about the 52-yard line, a gain of only three for the BC line. Don, I've been watching number 11, Larry Key, and he is limping out there. And he hasn't carried the ball since he's had that problem, but even coming out trying to block, going on swing patterns in the pass plays, he's having his problems. And Jimmy Young, number 30, he's a tough one. He's had 13 years of it. He's back in the ballgame. Florio had replaced him for one play. So it is second down and seven for the Lions. Flag is thrown. Bailey had the ball, let it get away as he got pressure from Ty Morris, number 20. Well, Jimmy Young may be tough. He may not be completely there. He was the one, I believe, that jumped offside or illegal procedure against the BC Lions. We'll listen for the ref's call. Well, the choice offered to Carl Cornell of the Alouettes. Here's the call. Procedure against number 32, BC. The decline to third down. I think he meant number 30, Don, because 32 is Grady Cavness, and he plays defense. It is number 30, Jimmy Young. So it goes to third down. Still seven from the Lions' 52-yard line. Louis Pisaglia in a punting situation. There he is. and a flag is thrown in the area of the putter. Randy Rhino makes the return up to about the 27-yard line, but contact was made by Friesen, who almost blocked the ball, coming in on Louis Pasaglia. Here it is. Well, from ground leg, oh, Friesen comes in here. Pasaglia doesn't take that much time to kick that ball, but he didn't make contact this time with the ball. He did with the kicker, and we have a contact in the kicker, so we will have a first down for the BC Lions. That is automatic. At the line of scrimmage, the 52-yard line. So the Lions get new life. Don, they're going to have to take a serious look at that protection for Pisaglia in those punts because Friesen has blocked one, and he could have had a second one there. Well, Pisaglia reflects on the situation. The Lions get set to go. We'll have their series of plays when play resumes in just a moment. Hello, we'll get back to that action in the field in just a moment. We have a lot of action and highlights of last week's games in the CFL coming up on the halftime show. And, of course, Russ and Don will be along to take a look at some of the more interesting plays of the first two quarters of this game. Coming up on the halftime show. Another jarring tackle out there. That was Wally Buono and Terry Bailey. But, again, Bailey hung on to the ball and should give the Lions a first down. There's a penalty marker down, however. Well, Bailey coming off the line here now. Zapex giving him a rough time there, and he might have been called. I don't know for holding, but he does fight his way. He does fight his way off the line and make the reception, but the holding was against the BC Lions. That'll wipe it out, take the ball back to the Lion 42, where now it is first down and 20. Look at the defensive crew of the BC Lions, number 61, Mr. Seymour, number 77, Louis Richardson. Taggy's hit, the ball in the air is grabbed by Leon Bryant, a good catch. In heavy traffic out there as the Alouettes couldn't get to it. Taggy dumped to the seat of his pants as he let that pass fly. Well, isolation on Bright going downfield. He slips as he goes downfield, gets up, makes the catch. Dickie Harris goes for the interception here. Thinks he might have six, just like Jim Burrow had in the first play of the game, but Bright makes the catch and gets them back within about eight yards off a first down, but Taggy paid for that a little bit. He got hit pretty hard. Gregoire threw on Taggy. Just under seven minutes until halftime in Montreal. The score is 17-10 for the Alouettes. 
been a good football game. Knocked away by Burrow. He's the man who made the interception for Montreal's first score against Leon Bright. Another game is getting underway later tonight in the CFL. That will be in Calgary where the Saskatchewan Rough Riders will be in action. This game is not seen in the province of Saskatchewan as they'll be seeing coverage especially for them. But our Western crew from Calgary and tomorrow night it's Ottawa and Hamilton. Winnipeg playing against the Eskimos. In Edmonton, the last game, by the way, at Clark Stadium in Edmonton as they'll move to the Commonwealth Stadium permanently next week. Basaglia putting on third down. This is to Rhino. The Lions in very quickly, but Rhino breaks out. Sam Britt slowed him down. We have two different penalty markers in two situations now. Well, from ground level, Rhino does a lot of work here. We probably got a clipping call against the Montreal Alouettes originally, but then there's a late hit when Rhino does get put down to the ground. We have a late hit coming in there with Harry Holt, number 31, coming in a little late, so we'll have offsetting penalties here. It's going to be holding against one, rough play against the other. And Rap a little upset. First down, Montreal, I'll get your number, Holt. A little. <laughs> so, a penalty for unnecessary roughness and for holding. He's very upset. Close the microphone. The difference is five yards. And so it goes to the 26-yard line. That's where the Alouettes will start. John O'Leary. Right at the line as he broke out. John Beaton. Made contact with him, knocked O'Leary off balance, and down he went as he was heading into open country. So that limits the game to about two. It'll be second down and eight from the 28-yard line for Montreal. We have five and a half minutes until halftime. As Tom said earlier at the half, we'll have highlights of tonight's first half, highlights of recent games and stories in the CFL with Tom McKee to stand by. is hauled down by Doug Seymour, the left defensive tackle who pursued him after obviously Joe couldn't find the man he was looking for, took off and Seymour nailed him. Well, Doug Seymour really impressed me there with the acceleration and speed as he ran Joe Barnes down. Joe, number seven, no slouch, and Seymour just accelerated to him to pull him down for the big loss. Uh, he's one of the discoveries of 1977 by the BC Lions in his second year now. He's only 6'3", 235 pounds from Missouri. He showed him on that play. This is third down and 22. Wano gets it away comfortably. Not a good kick, though. Lowe bounding around center field of the 52-yard line for Hinton. And he'll head for the sidelines and go out of bounds right there. Chuck Zapek forced him out. You take number eight slow to get up, made a good play, forcing the ball carry to go wide, lines Zapek to put a pretty good hit on. Limited the return to one yard after a 42-yard punt. Utah very slowly making his way back across, former BC Lion property, and of course the Toronto Argonaut, Larry Utah. And John Beaton, who he was traded for, is the backup defensive back with these BC Lions. So first down Lions it is from the Lion 52 yard line. Here's Hope. Puts his head down and cracks across center field down near the 50 yard line. Roll past Ty Morris on that play. Who slowed him down. It's going to be a gain of about eight. Now Jimmy Young number 30 playing that tight end spot. Just goes head on with Chuck Zapek, who's having a great year, and he just holds Zapek's attention long enough to say, hey, you're not going to make the tackle. But 
We've got Holt running on that tailback spot and Florio running on the fullback spot, and Key is not in the ball game right now. Ever since that long gain he made, he's been sidelined. That is Holt shopping for a first down. And getting close to it in the area of the 48-yard line. Jerry Taggy almost didn't get the ball to him. He's having a little conversation with him now, I'm sure, saying what happened on that play. There was a little misfire. We almost fumbled. It's going to be a close measurement coming up here, I would think. I'd like to remind you that coming up this Sunday, CBC Sports will bring you coverage of Canada's richest harness race, the Prix d'Etat, from Blue Bonnets Raceway here in Montreal. So watch for this coming Sunday afternoon right here on CBC Television. The Lions did not quite make it. They will measure again out on the hash marks to make that official. But they are that much short of a first down with third down coming up. They trail 14-10. We have three minutes and 36 seconds left in this the second quarter. Straight ahead should have it right there. He didn't get it by too much, Don. Well, the official stepped in around the 47, and that should give it to him fairly comfortably. We'll see when they unpile. Don't forget highlights of the uh, last game the Lions played when they beat Saskatchewan. It wound up costing Jim Eddy his job. There's the measurement and the clear football ahead. They have the first down, but not by that much. Well, in the middle of that Montreal line certainly gets good penetration. You can see Glenn Weir was just ahead of everybody else, and Weir and Judges just go straight to the ground like groundhogs and try and create the new line of scrimmage, allowing the linebackers to come in and make the hit. And he just makes about a half a yard on that. But Weir, with that little bit of movement there, shows what makes him a good defensive lineman. Those groundhogs see their shadow. Look out. <laughs> Here's Taggy, complete. Jimmy Young back in offensively down to the 40-yard line. That'll be a pickup of about seven and a half yards. For the Lions, Carl Cornell makes the containment on Jimmy Young. And the score here is 17 to 10. We have just three minutes to play now in quarter two of the Olympic Stadium. We'll be right back after this. Your tape recorder can only sound as good as your tape. And we think your recorder deserves Sony tape. Sony has a separate division exclusively devoted to magnetic products, and it stands to reason that the people who design precision tape heads, like ferrite and ferrite, should have the know-how to design precision tape, like Sony Ferrichrome. There's a Sony tape for every application, from dictating to stereo high fidelity. Pick up some at your Sony dealer. Your recorder deserves it. We must have in the area of 65,000 people here in Montreal tonight. As it is second down from the 40-yard line and three to go for the British Columbia Lions, trailing 17 to 10. Rudy Florio getting battered around does not have the first down. He was turned back around the 39. You know, a crowd like this, Russ, indicates what a new facility can do. Uh, the Commonwealth Stadium virtually sold out now for all Eskimo games. The Alouettes moved here. It was a miraculous transformation. And now in Vancouver, of course, they're talking new stadium there, and I'm sure if it comes up, the same will apply. Carl Cornell, number 72, one of these trio of linebackers who plays so well with the Alouettes, takes a pretty good shot from a pretty good guy, number 52, Mr. Wilson, and gets in on the stop. The Lions again will gamble. A uh, quick pitch out here. The key back in the ball game. Darts in for what could be a first down, depending on the penalty marker, which was thrown on the play. I think they brought Key in just for that particular play. He's hurting, and that's a particular type of play that needs good timing with Taggy keeping the ball and either getting himself or pitching. And he just wanted to get the first down and go back to the bench. It looks to be a procedure penalty against the British Columbia Lions. Larry Watkins. 
The Alouettes will roll them back on the five-yard penalty. And they'll be going from the 44-yard line. Much dismayed is Vic Rapp, the head coach of the Lions. Doesn't Very like the call. Out there. Very much involved. Well, he's suffering from some frustrations, too. He calls them, quote, stupid penalties. And when you're trying to execute as well as you're capable of, like he is from the sidelines, and they come up with these crazy penalties enough to drive a man into broadcasting, isn't it, Russ? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> That's the closest thing to insanity <laughs> at times. Third down putt. It is a good one by Fasaglia. Hangs it high and hangs it deep. Eight yards into the end zone, and Randy Rhino will kneel down right there and concede the single point on that punt from Fasaglia, which makes the score now the Alouette 17 and the Lions 11. And we have two minutes and 19 seconds left in the second quarter. A 52 yard punt for the single. John, a good buddy of ours, Wood Tucker, had some knee surgery in Ottawa today, and he worked with us last year on these broadcasts and did the college work for CBC, and I'm sure he's watching tonight. And we'd all like to wish him well and just say hi. We sure do. The Alouettes will start from the 35, rather than accept the kickoff. Well, of course, the single point, they go from there. They've got two men wide left. And a direct handoff to John O'Leary, slashing for a first down. Up to the 46-yard line, a gain of 11. A quick opening play. There's Al Wilson, the All-Canadian veteran center for the BC Lions. Looks to be in discomfort there at the bench. A good play by Barnes here. Hands off to O'Leary, keeps going back as though he's got the ball, with O'Leary going downfield, makes the defensive line believe that he still has it, and O'Leary, since being criticized a little bit by Coach Canella, has just been outstanding, including the times when he was playing hurt. Here he is again. Well, there he out to the 52, which would be good for five to six yards. Girodi finally made the tackle on him. We have a minute and 59 seconds remaining in the second quarter now. Don't forget at halftime. Highlights of last week's games to Tom McKee. The story, of course, of the coaching change in Saskatchewan. And highlights of the first half here in Montreal tonight. There's Larry Key watching from the sidelines as the Alouettes have the ball, second down and four and a half. That is ruled a catch by Larry Smith, his first tonight at the 49 yard line of BC for an Alouette first down. And I've been impressed by Joe Barnes from the end zone. We'll see him here, but he's throwing the ball away from the defenders. And that prevents interceptions. This time, Larry Smith going downfield. He might have been able to get another two or three yards if he delivered the ball a little further downfield. But he brought him back, didn't throw it very pretty, but brought him back away from the defender, getting the first down and keeping the drive going. players. Barnes goes back as though to throw from the pocket. Rolls out to the right. Gets a lot of time. Throws to Dalla Riva. His first catch today and his fourth of the season, which is a little misleading because he's been out for four games. Gain of 22 yards. Down to the Lions. 26-yard line. Ken starts. Gets down to about the 22. Will be a gain of four. The time, 56 seconds. As the minute flag is up on the sideline. And uh, Dartmouth, Nova Scotia being acknowledged here in Montreal tonight. They had quite a crowd in this complex last night with the Los Angeles Dodgers here playing the Montreal Expos. They will again tomorrow, too. Talking with Tommy Lasorda, the Dodgers today, and the thick of that National League Western pennant race. Dave DeBarnes to throw, and he's got Del Riva for the touchdown. A 
two yard touchdown pass from Barnes to Dallariva. Well, again, Joe Barnes doing well. What we talked about earlier in this broadcast, throwing the ball away from the defender. Peter Dallariva is downfield just about the goal line, but he throws it low, brings him back and doesn't get the defender any opportunity to get involved in the play, allowing Peter Dellariva to get his first touchdown of the year. And Don Sweet has his third convert of the night, and the LOS up their lead at 24 to 11. We have 36 seconds left in the half. Barnes now is 10 for 13. He's thrown two touchdown strikes. Dellariva with two catches and one touchdown reception. And Don Sweet walks off to the 45-yard line. A pair from the Montreal kickoff as you see the story of the Alouette scoring drive. It's been quite a first half. First, the Alouettes jumping into a 14-0 lead. The Lions looking very impressive on offense, coming back. And now Montreal finally getting a good offensive drive of the road, their best of the night. To increase their lead to 24 to 11 just before halftime. <laughs> Vic Raff trying to find a way to solve these Montreal Alouettes. He wants to stay in that Western lead. The spot he shares right now with the Evans and Eskimos will be playing tomorrow night. The Alouettes looking to get back into a tie with the Ottawa Rough Riders here in the East for first place. Five yard line for Leon Bright. Bright getting up to the 30. And the Lions will start from the 30 with about 30 seconds to play in the second quarter on a 26-yard return by Bright. There he is, Leon, number 26. Jimmy Young, number 30 in the lineup now, as is Larry Key. As Rapp wants to strike quickly if he can before halftime. went down right beside him on contact as that ball was delivered. In five well, seconds as you see. Number 70 Clifton Alapa was the only one that was in there. They've caught him for unnecessary roughness Alapa. Now Sharuk gets a good block on number 76 Chuck Zapek and he comes back after him here and I'm sure the officials didn't see this but it looked like it might have been a clip, but Shrook seemed to get around in front of him and did a good job from the blind side. Gotta watch those little guys. Well, I know you liked him when you first signed him out of Acadia in Toronto after a good college year, Al Shrook had. I think he's got a lot of good years ahead of him in this league. And he's with the type of club that throws the ball, and that's his type of game. Five seconds left. The Lions out to their 51 yard line for this play. Peggy steps to his left and up and lets it go. It is intercepted by Zapak. He laterals the ball back. It is loose. Recovered by Montreal. And they've used up all the time on the board. That should be it on the first half. Leon Bright is still down back on the 35-yard line. He's shaken up on that last play of the first half. As the BC training staff comes out to attend to Leon Bright, you see just on the left of your picture, They've already lost Larry Key for a portion of the game, and now Bright has made returns for nearly 100 yards tonight on kickoffs and punts. He's being attended to. So we'll get the story on Leon Bright for you as soon as we can. It happened, as you saw, at the tail end of that final play and the interception that ended this first half. You might see it here. Now we see Bright downfield now as Zapek makes the interception. We'll watch to see if 
somebody drills him from behind. It looks like Carl Cornell is the man that got him and a good solid hit on the shoulder. And he may have hurt that shoulder as he's lying, still lying down in the field. Well, at the end of the first half, the score is the Montreal Alouettes 24 and the British Columbia Lions 11. We've got more fun under the sun with the good fun Chevrolet truck. We've got pickup and sport fans, suburbs and lasers, all kinds of trucks, both handsome and rough. We've got V8 and sixes and a new diesel pickup truck. Yeah, there's more fun under the sun with the good fun Chevrolet truck. Yeah. When you're thirsty, when you're really thirsty. Canada Dry Ginger Ale, I'm ready for you. Any thirst, any time, I'm ready for you. Canada Dry is not too sweet, so it quenches your thirst better. Canada Dry, I was ready for you. Any thirst, any time, I'm ready for you. Canada Dry Ginger Ale. Hello again, everybody. I'm Tom McKee. Welcome to our halftime show. We'll have some of the important plays with Don Chevrolet and Russ Jackson from the first two periods of tonight's game. But the first news on our CFL highlights, I'm sure you're aware of. Another head coach bit the bullet this past week. Jim Eddy, apparently too much a perfect gentleman, was fired by Saskatchewan Rough Riders after their fifth loss in five games. Rider management said Eddy failed to generate motivation, even though they lost by only a single point against BC. Actually, the Riders carried the early play. Ron Lancaster to Frank Russell here. Did he hold it long enough? Number 32, Grady Kavnis, didn't think so. Two minutes later, Jerry Taggy pops a little dump pass to rookie Harry Holt. From the 46-yard line, and the game is tied at 7-7. Two field goals by Macaridi, Pasaglia one. Lions also caught Macaridi in the end zone for two points. At the half, Saskatchewan led 13-12. Leon Bright in the third quarter takes off on a reverse, teaming up with rookie Keys. It's a scamper for 63 yards, touchdown. Basaglia converted that and had two more field goals. The Lions went ahead 23-13. Larry Dick took over at quarterback for the Riders after Lancaster was shaken up. Like a good wine, he got better as time went on, eventually resulting in this Mike Strickland one-yard major. This was late in the third quarter. Dick showed his passing prowess, too. To Brian O'Hara. And down to the BC 14-yard line. Now with the score 24-20. After a BC single, Saskatchewan had four tries from here. In fact, three at the seven-yard line. But the best they could manage was three. And the door opened for the departure of one head coach and the arrival of another. The Saskatchewan Rough Rider Football Club has taken the decision that our current state of on-field activities is such that a coaching change is required at this time. To that end, the club and Jim Eddy have mutually agreed that his tenure as head coach will end today. Uh, Walter Posadowski uh, has been appointed acting head football coach for the remainder of the 1978 season. Just a few comments, if I might, uh, on the, the current situation. Uh, rather than try to identify uh, a series of problems, uh, you're all uh, reporters and familiar with uh, the activities that have led up to the 0-5 and five situation. But it seemed uh, to us, in, in uh, trying to uh, find a cure, that there is, uh, has been, uh, or appears to have been, a lack of uh, motivation in the club on the field. Uh, for some reason, uh, uh, the 1978 edition of the club uh, doesn't seem to display that uh, character and discipline that uh, Saskatchewan Rough Rider clubs of the past have displayed. Uh, appear, for whatever reason, to be uh, lacking confidence and, and the swagger that is displayed uh, with a team that appears to have a winning attitude. When you're talking about a pro athlete, that motivation has got to come from within himself. It doesn't come from him. He's getting paid for it. I don't care if a, a coach does handstands. 
Uh, there's not going to be too much more that he's going to be able to do that's going to be an inspiration to that guy. So I feel that um, the primary motivation is self-motivation. Now, anything you can do other than that to try to get the, the fellas up, you know, that's fine. That's a plus. We'll have highlights of the Edmonton, Toronto, and Calgary Winnipeg games in just a moment. CFL trade last week, the Argos and Hamilton exchanged former stars of Canadian college football. Neil Lumsden, strong-running fullback with Toronto, had been on the trading block for over a month, actually. Argos are going with two imports in their offensive backfield. Ken Clark became available after being suspended by the Cats when he refused to be their backup wide receiver. Argos can use him. In fact, they did, just a couple of hours after the trade was announced. The Argos met Edmonton Eskimos at Exhibition Stadium. Ken Clark, as a matter of fact, is averaging just under 40 yards this season for his punting, but this was to be a miserable night for him and Toronto fans. The Argos were still in the game, believe it or not, as late as this first quarter action. Larry Highball returns Clark's kick 29 yards to the Toronto 20. Three passes later, the janitor in a drum, they used to call him skinny now, Tom Wilkinson, nine yards to another, Tom, Tom Scott. Convert good, Edmonton 11, Argos nothing. In the second quarter, it's high pockets, high ball again. This time, he takes the punt at his own 14-yard line, and he isn't stopped until Rogers gets him at the Toronto 43. The return 53 yards, it resulted in a field goal. Sutter tried a 50-yard field goal for Toronto, missed for a single, 14-1 now. Wilkinson then passed 23 yards to George McGowan, who we understand is taped up like a mummy when he plays. Now to Waddell Smith, 33 yards for him to set up Jim Germany from just two yards out. At the half, Edmonton 21, Toronto 1. Well into the third period, Rodney Allison hit Slade Willis. This play traveled 37 yards, and Argo fans had a brief moment of hope. That was dashed on the very next play, however, as Allison has to scramble, gets away a bad pass to Rogers. It was intercepted by Kepley. Edmonton eventually got another cutler. Lumsden, strong running fullback with Toronto, had been on the trading block for over a month, actually. Argos are going with two imports in their offensive backfield. 
Ken Clark became available after being suspended by the Cats when he refused to be their backup wide receiver. Argos can use him. In fact, they did just a couple of hours after the trade was announced. The Argos met Edmonton Eskimos at Exhibition Stadium. Ken Clark, as a matter of fact, is averaging just under 40 yards this season for his punting, but this was to be a miserable night for him and Toronto fans. The Argos were still in the game, believe it or not, as late as this first quarter action. Larry Highball returns Clark's kick 29 yards to the Toronto 20. Three passes later, the janitor in a drum, they used to call him skinny now, Tom Wilkinson, nine yards to another, Tom, Tom Scott. Convert good, Edmonton 11, Argos nothing. In the second quarter, it's high pockets, high ball again. This time, he takes the punt at his own 14-yard line. And he isn't stopped until Rogers gets him at the Toronto 43. The return 53 yards. It resulted in a field goal. Sutter tried a 50-yard field goal for Toronto, missed for a single. 14-1 now. Wilkinson then passed 23 yards to George McGowan, who we understand is taped up like a mummy when he plays. Now to Waddell Smith, 33 yards for him to set up Jim Germany from just two yards out. At the half, Edmonton 21, Toronto 1. Well into the third period, Rodney Allison hit Slade Willis. This play traveled 37 yards, and Argo fans had a brief moment of hope. That was dashed on the very next play, however, as Allison has to scramble, gets away a bad pass to Rogers. It was intercepted by Kepley. Edmonton eventually got another Cutler three-pointer and went to the fourth quarter, leading 25-3. Sprinkling salt on Toronto's open wounds, Wilkinson caps off their first sequence in the last quarter, passing to McGowan again. It's now 32-3. But the Eskimos aren't done. Enter the hero of last year's Rose Bowl game, quarterback Warren Moon, tall, tough, good arm, accurate, and to Tom Scott, and mercifully, the final touchdown of the game for Toronto fans. And one more convert, another single, Edmonton 40, Toronto 3. The Argos hang their heads in shame. Same day, Western Conference, Calgary at Winnipeg. Both clubs had touchdowns called back for holding. Then with the Stampeders leading 5-3, rookie Joe Poplowski makes one of six receptions to set up the first good major. This was a third down gamble. Brock finding Gordy Patterson just over the goal line. The convert fizzled, but they had a 9-5 lead. Bad news for Brock, good news for Calgary linebacker Anthony Dickerson. The ball tipped into his hands. It's at the Winnipeg 48. Then in the dying seconds, first half, Winnipeg's Murph Walker gets caught. End zone interference, it's called on Tom Forzani. Now the Stamps are first in goal. Quarterback John Huffnagel, two plays later, decides to do the job himself. Action left. He goes right. Calgary back on top by a score of 12 to 9. In the third quarter, it was a field goal each way before Huffnagel and Willie Armstead combined for a spectacular 75-yard touchdown. That opened the way for Calgary. Bomber Reggie Pearson is in the foot race with Armstead. The Stamps are slapping their saddles with a 22-12 lead. Winnipeg moved the ball 290 yards through the air. However, much of that yardage took place between the 35-yard lines. Even efforts like this by Leo Ezerins proved the Bombers this night were off target. They settled for another Ruoff field goal. This was good from 41 yards out, his third of five during the game. That brought Winnipeg 22 to 21 with just over three minutes left in the game. Ralph Brock picks a bad time to get picked off. He threw two interceptions, his first of the season. But this one was the real killer. Doug Falconer runs the ball in for the major. The Bombers did mount another drive, and after two third-down gambles, they appear to have the touchdown they needed. But Leo Ezrin, the ball carrier, was called for illegal motion, and Ralph Brock ran out of completions in fighting the clock and the Stampeders. Calgary 29, Winnipeg 21. That trade between Hamilton and Toronto was finalized with John Kinch going to Toronto, Ken Clark, and of course, that was all for Neil Lumsden. With me is Russ Jackson, and he has the highlights of the first half of tonight's game in just a moment. For guys like me who love the great smell of Brute, here's a play that goes all the way. First, you hit the shower with Brute 33 shampoo. You pick up protection against wetness, with Brute 33 antiperspirant. Cut to the sink, where Brute 33 cream shave chops down even the toughest beers, and get super hair control with Brute 33 hairspray. Go all the way with Brute 33, because when you stay with the great smell of Brute, 
the great smell of brute stays with you. I've had this car for about three years and 130,000 miles, and I look after it. Like using STP oil treatment. A lot of drivers I know add STP to their engines. It gives your car that extra care I like having, whether I'm driving 12 hours a day or just around the block. You free? <laughs> yeah, get in. I never get a break, but my car sure does with STP oil treatment. This European design radial is the one with the big reputation. It promises outstanding mileage. It gives you great traction and good skid resistance. And if you want handling, this European design radial has got it cornered. Now, this kind of quality makes it one of the most expensive tires you can buy. The F. Goodrich Lifesaver radials are just as good, but they can cost you less. Whether it's brick, siding, shingles, or stucco, insulating your home makes a lot of sense. And there's one insulation that can be installed in any home, Rapco Foam. Rapco Foam fills every nook and cranny and is one of the most efficient insulations you can buy because it cannot settle like granular or fiber insulation. And to make it easy for you to have your home insulated, financing can be arranged through 1,234 branch banks across Canada. For the name of your nearest Rapco Foamer, See your yellow pages under insulation. We welcome you back to the Olympic Stadium here in Montreal, Quebec, where the Montreal Alouettes and the BC Lions Russ have given us quite an exciting first half of football. Explosive, good offensive plays, but certainly in Montreal's case, defense was the key early in the game for them. Well, Don, it has been an exciting half of football when you put that many points on the board, but Montreal got off to the great start. They kicked off to the BC Lions. First play from scrimmage after they were called for blocking from the rear on the return of the kickoff. Taggy seemed to lay the ball up. He didn't have anything on it. Al Sharuk was the intended receiver, and instead of coming back towards the ball, he was gliding away from it, and number 16, Jim Burrow, just stepped in front of him and took it in the end zone for 12, from 12 yards out for the first touchdown. And later, after a blocked punt by Jerry Frieson and recovered by Ty Morris, second play from line of scrimmage after throwing a completed pass, to O'Leary, Barnes went back, dumped it out to Ken Starks. They were in a man-to-man -man defense, and the free safety was supposed to pick him up, got blocked by O'Leary. He took it into the end zone with no one around him, and it wasn't a missed assignment or anything, just that the defensive back who had to get there just couldn't get there, and that put Montreal ahead 14-0. And then I was really pleased to see that BC didn't lose their composure. They stayed with it. Taggy threw the ball, ran the ball, and they were very impressive in the first quarter, gaining a net offense of about 175 yards. Yet trailing at this stage by a score of 24 to 11 of the Montreal Alouettes. Joe Barnes out there with the Alouettes. He's quarterbacked them well, but the defense got the ball to Barnes time and time again. All right, we'll be back with the second half in just a moment. The first thing we have for your assignment is this micro cassette tape recorder. Genius. Did you design this, huh? Uh, well, no, actually. It's a Sony. Next is this radio with 32 worldwide bands. Can tune in just about any place. Extraordinary. Who gets the credit for this one? Oh, uh, this is a Sony, too. You'll also need this ultra-compact portable video camera. And we're going to mount this 5-inch color TV in your car, along with this Betamax deck for playback. Remarkable. Are they, uh... Yes. They're Sony also. <laughs> Hello again, everybody. Tom McKee along with Don Chevry and Russ Jackson back at Olympic Stadium. You all CFL action as the Montreal Alouettes lead the BC Lions 24 to 11 as we get ready to start the third quarter. First two quarters, very hard. Good for the medical people if they happen to be able to send bills. Larry Key, a hamstring pull in his left leg. He was in pain for the remainder of that 
first half. We'll have to see how mobile he is in the second half. We had Richard Appleby also a twisted left ankle he was favoring. Jim Young just as the half ended uh, he pulled a muscle in the inside of his left leg up near the top and Leon Bright of course he had a crunching blow to the chest just as the second quarter ended and Tony Proudfoot they suspect he broke his arm again that's his left arm that was back in the first quarter and big tackle Brent Watson also twisted his ankle so it's a busy night for the medics. Indeed and here's Ian Mofford returning the second half kickoff. Mofford was cut down in full flight by Glenn Leonard. 34-yard run back for Young Ian. And Montreal will be getting rolling around the 34-yard line as you see how they fared statistically in the first half. With the Lions enjoying a big advantage in offense. Yet not on the scoreboard. A penalty marker was down on that kickoff, by the way. Don, you mentioned before the attendance over 65,000. We have heard down here at 65, 312. So you were just about right on the button. Well, it's not the biggest crowd they've had here, but certainly the biggest crowd this year. 68,505 is the record football crowd here at the Olympic Stadium. Beautiful day in Montreal and a cool evening. Just ideal for spectator enjoyment. John O'Leary out to the 35 yard line that penalty marker on the kickoff was waived and so the Alouettes are in possession here going second and eight now. Don we have one change in that defensive alignment since the start of the game for the BC Lions. John Beaton number 10 has replaced Doug Carlson who was hurt earlier and Jim Young was playing that spot. Now we have number 10 John Beaton in there. From the 35 second down Montreal. Barnes could not get back up into the pocket. He tried to escape, but the two defenders, Drew Taylor and Rick Goltz, were right there to make sure he couldn't get that pass away. So Barnes will lose a yard or two, takes him back to third and nine, third and ten. Now Joe Barnes takes this back to throw. He had plenty of time originally. He's looking downfield. He starts up the middle, and number 60, who's playing with Dan Yoakum out there, number 67, gets his seventh sack of the season. But he's not that big. Drew Taylor, number 60, he only goes at 237. He gets a pretty good shot from Smith first, and then he's got to take on Yoakum. Makes the sack here, and he leads the Lions with seven sacks. Here's Bono's punt. Down to Hinton, and he runs into a crowd, going nowhere at the 33-yard line. Oh, Vic Rapp hoping now the BC Lions can get something rolling here in the third quarter as they trail by 13 points at 24 to 11. The Lions so intent on proving they are for real in 1978 after becoming the CFL's Cinderella team of 1977. Holt. Greg is tackled Junior IU for a yard or two. He had it by the jersey. Got it up around the 34 yard line. So we'll make it a two yard game. Call it second down and eight. Well, Larry Key is out there starting at that running back spot. Number 11. He does not have that wrapping outside as he did in the first half. But you can probably bet that they've wrapped it inside the pant leg now. It doesn't just show, but it still hurts. Lo and behold, Tony Proudfoot is back in that uh, lineup. We'll bring you up to date on that after this play. All right, he's out there, Tom. So that injury of his, not as serious as first suspected. Holt making that catch on the run and being run down by Larry Utek and Randy Rhino around the 45-yard line. That should be a British Columbia Lion first down. It is. And Tony Proudfoot apparently they're not convinced. They, th they think he might just have bruised uh, the same part of the arm that he broke earlier this year in a preseason game. I, I don't know whether it's a wise thing to let him go back in as taped up as he is. It seems like an unnecessary risk at this stage. Well, we hope it isn't broken for Tony's sake and the Alouette's sake. He's having a good year and has had some problems with injuries and certainly does a good job in there with UTEC. Well, now, Utech's taken out now. He's been shaken up of the play. We'll get back with word on what's happening with Larry Utech. The play resumes in just a moment. 
the people who bring you the sporty Sunbird and Firebird have also packed a lot of fun into Acadia. For 78, standard features include 1.6 liter overhead cam engine, four on the floor, hatchback, center console, AM radio, white wall tires, and a whole lot more. Pontiac Acadian, and check out the new four-door. You got it, Pontiac. my good old car. Well, it's not that old. It's no good anymore. How come my cars never last very long? Shell's got some simple tips on how to keep a nice car like yours out of a place like this. Plan regular service with your owner's manual. Stick with the service station you can trust. And read the Longer Car Life Book, one of a series of helpful new books, free from Shell. Shell helps. Montreal 24, British Columbia 11. The Lions first down at their own 45-yard line. Ty Boris has replaced Larry Utek. Shaken up at the last play. Taggy with Ty. Fires left for Holt. And Holt flies down the far sideline. Up to about the 50-yard line of the Alouettes, but there's a penalty marker down on this side of the field. Larry Utek back in the ball game. That's exactly what the thing was, as uh, Don said. It's just uh, shook up a little bit. He had a pain. He said that shot down from his neck Fair into the fingers of his. Against Montreal. Decline. First down. Well, you heard Blair Shallow describe the situation. The penalty's been declined, so it's first down. At the 51 yard line of the Alouettes. Pitch to Holt. And Big Holt gets down for about four. Alapa made the stop. Well, there's Cavdis. He was uh, shaken up earlier as well. It's been a rough night of both these teams. Well, Harry Holt, number 31, who's about 6'3 and 220 and has pretty good speed, has become the workhorse in that backfield with Key not as healthy as he was at the start of the ball game. And in this drive, has got two passes and carried the ball very effectively. Eight carries for 30 yards for Holt so far. Uh, he's gone out. Florio's in. Key's in there as well. And Al Sharuk could not bring that pass in from Jerry Tag. So it'll go to third down and six for the British Columbia line. Again, their offense stalls. Well, Al Sharuk, who we talked about in that first interception, did not come back to the ball as Burrow intercepted, went for the TD this time, made a supreme effort to come back in front of Dickie Harris, coming back toward the ball, trying to get that first down, and almost made an outstanding catch here as he couldn't quite hold the ball, diving back, but definitely coming back toward the pass. The Saglia. Punts it away. Good and high. Into the end zone. Rhino back a good 12 yards. We'll give up one. So it's now a 12 point difference of 24 to 12. 61 yard punt by Louis Pasaglia. Well, again, little action as Rhino is giving it up here. Florio comes in here, takes a pretty good shot at Moppert. And then number 54, Leonard, he gets a shot from him. Little push here, little help, and watch this. Oh, I'll give you one, and now I'll hit you back if you're not careful. Right on the face Dickie guard. Harris. Not Moppert. Moppert comes in as a peacemaker. And we have 24-12 at that point. I will never understand, as I said before, why somebody would thrust their bare hand out at somebody's face guard. Anyway, from the 35-yard line. Ken Starch, no game. Lion defenders reacting well. Sam Britz, Glenn Jackson, the two linebackers, combined to stop that play. 
There's Jerry Taggy, a frustrating night for him in terms of moving the Lion offense consistently. They've been impressive at times, but have not manufactured more than 12 points. They trail 24 to 12. We played about five minutes and 15 seconds in this third quarter. Bob Gaddis coming out wide left. Joe Barnes with the call. Dropped by McMahon. Helped up by Drew Taylor, number 60 of the Lions. Well, the BC Lions getting a little more pressure on Joe Barnes, number seven, the Montreal quarterback. And that always helps the defense, just creates little indecision in throwing that ball. Good fake in here. BC Lion defense wasn't fooled at all. Joe forced to run, and Drew takes a pretty good shot. Drew Taylor, number 60, at Barnes, just forcing him to throw a little behind McMahon, number 33. Wally Bono. And certainly a kick tonight. That is not a good one. Taking it on the dead run. Up to the 54-yard line. Is Leon Bright. Obviously, not seriously injured there just before the half. Only a 31-yard punt by Buono that time. A nine-yard return by this man, Leon Bright. Well, the BC Lions have good field position at center field. We see uh, an Academy Award performance here, maybe, as Buono is punting the ball, tries to draw the roughing call. Well, he did get touched a little bit, possibly, by Jackson. Pan's a little upset about that. Well, I'd still give him 7.5. <laughs> Holt gets hard inside. No room. Zapek Cornell and company turn him back. Judges there as well. And that'll limit the game to two yards. The Montreal defense, very, very tough, as we said, against the run. And Jerry Taggy and company are finding that out tonight. Well, there's Proud putting that arm all taped up, and let's hope that it's only that bruise that Tom talked about earlier and not possibly a broken arm again. Over the top came Randy Rhino, a split second timing to break that pass up for Bailey. Terry Bailey, number 36, the Simon Fraser graduate, who's a starter in that offensive backfield now, runs a fine curl pattern over the middle, but number 21, Randy Rhino, reading it perfectly, comes in over the top and knocks it away from Bailey. And Bailey was caught 50 passes last year and gained the starting berth ahead of Jimmy Young this year, but Jimmy does so many things well, he can move around anywhere in that offensive backfield or defensive backfield. They're back near the five-yard line for this man because that's his average tonight, over 52 yards. Louis Pasaglia. Way back to the two goes Rhino. And after he slipped one tackle from Florio, he's finally taken down. The 13-yard line. So the Alouettes will be starting deep. Thanks to the Sanglia. A 51-yard punt that time by Louis. The score is 24 to 12. Just the one single point that the Sanglia single here in this third quarter. It was 24 to 11 at halftime and 14-10 Montreal at the end of the first quarter. An explosive first quarter. Starch cuts outside and has some company and was taken down by Oliver and Girodi. But there's a penalty marker down on that play as well. Well, we'll let them sort that out and remind you that Canadian professional football will return after this message. When you're playing at something special, pick up something special from Labatt's, the special light cooler pack. It keeps a special beer cold for hours. 
So now you can enjoy real Canadian beer flavor with less than 99 calories in a can. Refundable empties go back in the top. It's the handiest pack beer ever came in. So when you're planning something special, pick up Labatt Special Life. When Labatt brews it, you know it's special. Well, we remind you that football reply will be uh, coming up with some answers, hopefully, if time permits, after this football game tonight. We invite your letters to this address. If you have any questions, the CFL players, coaches, officials, whatever, and we'll, they say, try to answer some after the game, if time permits. He got in behind John Beaton, and Barnes led him beautifully with the throw, just an inch or two too far. Well, that penalty just before that particular play, before the timeout, was a legal procedure against the Alouettes and declined by the BC Lions. But Gaddis, just at the end of this play, accelerated past John Beaton and just couldn't hang on to that as it went off his fingertips. And even on a first bounce, he couldn't get it. That groan you heard is because the crowd here, 65,312 of them, was watching the same replay that you were at home on the big scoreboard here at the Olympic Stadium. Here's Wally Bueno. Down to Hinton. Starts is there to help blow him back. And the Tilio will give him the 54-yard line. 42-yard punt and a 10-yard run back that time. Well, in two nights, Olympic Stadium has put in just under 100,000 spectators for baseball and football. Over 65,000 here this evening. Watching the Alouettes lead the Lions by 12 points at 24 to 12. Here's Taggy with the first down play. Taken down inside the five-yard line at the two to three, and it appears that he has been shaken up. A similar play to the one that Larry Key, his cousin, was injured on, and now Bright is suffering down there. Let's watch it again. A little razzle-dazzle in here as Bright goes down in isolation. The ball is being thrown back from Key to Tagian, who got good protection. He's looking downfield now for the deep receiver. Bright had come across underneath the deep receiver, wide open there, and does a good job of getting away from Rhino to take the ball inside the five-yard line. But he shows super acceleration here, Don. It looks like he's cut off by UTEC at the sideline, but he just accelerates down that sideline, tried to cut back, and couldn't do it. And you know who hit him again? Dickie Harris. The crowd roaring because they were trying to guess the attendance, and they put the answer up on the board. Here it is again. Here we see the throwback from Key to Taggy, and then he lays that ball out there. He's looking deep now, and then decides to go to Bright. But the acceleration as he gets down this sideline shows the speed that he does have. It looks like he may be stepping out at any time. He walks the tightrope. I'm sorry, it was Burrow number 16 this time, not number 18, that made that hit on Bright. Well, Bright out to the bench now, getting assistance, a 51-yard gain. Here come the Lions, first down for the LOF tree. Holmes to the one-yard line. I think you have to be pretty tall to be able to go up over the top from about four yards out, as Holt tried to do, as we see Bright on the bench being treated. Holt here, getting up a little early, trying to get over that pileup. And that's a long way to the goal line when you get that high, that far out. Right, receiving attention. The ball is at the one-yard line. Five minutes remaining in the third quarter. Glenn Weir now is coming over to the, the sidelines. He's complaining to Montreal trainer about something. But 
that uh, the fact is because he went down on one knee and the trainer made an appearance, he must come out for one play. So they've lost Glenn Weir for this big goal line stand, at least one play. This is second down. Larry Key gets in for the touchdown. They work on Leon Bright. He's hurting. Key is also hurting, but he came back in to score for the Lions. Well, Jerry Tagge had a lot of problem getting this play organized because of the crowd yelling, and it's difficult to hear down on the field. But the offensive line does a good job of creating just a little crack in the defense there. And even though he is hurt, Key took that ball to the goal line. And you have to smell it and want it when you're down that close. And he did. Here's Basagli and I with a point after attempt. Lions getting back within range. Though he converts it, the score now. Montreal Alouettes 24. And the British Columbia Lions 19. Now we see that push as we take him into the end zone. And number 77, Junior Ayu, got brought right down the line. He came down the line trying to pinch. He came down. Watkins, number 64, took him right down the line, past the play, allowing number 11, Larry Key, to go into the end zone. And with the convert, making the score 24-19. There is what is happening as you watch the details of the scoring drive to Leon Bride. He's writhing in pain over there, flat out on the bench. Some injuries that seem quite serious and, and are painful turn out to be not too significant as time goes on. That's, well, those, that's the case. Don, those muscle cramps can really hurt at times, yeah. and ball players such as Brighton Key will get those, and they can look very serious. Gaddis takes it five yards into the end zone once he finds it. And he's hit way back at the two-yard line. Oh, the Lions have got the Alouettes. Really pinned deep for this series of plays. Gannis uh, and uh, Ian Moffin were back, and the ball went between them. Gannis scurried to pick it up, as you saw. It couldn't for a while. They nailed him around to two. Don, it's important that the Montreal team get some offense going here because the BC Lions are getting some momentum up late in this third quarter and are only five points behind. We'll look back at the injury to Bright as he's bringing down the sideline, being chased by number 23, Proudfoot. He wants to cut back here against Burrow as Al Sharuk's down there. Sharuk is afraid of clipping, and he seemed to go down innocently, and then Florio, number 12, fell on him, his own ball player. That might have done it. Bright remains at the bench with the Lion defense. Try to hold the Alouettes deep and win this ball back. 4.15 to play in the third quarter. Ken Starch gets across the five to about the six, and now John O'Leary comes up limping. It has been a tough night for injuries both ways. Oh, it's such a great night for football out there. It's not as hot as it was in Ottawa last week. Sam Britt's number 45, the middle linebacker, makes a good play here. Following along behind the defensive line, picking the spot, and making the tackle on Starch. And he certainly has been a welcome addition to this BC Lion defense. He sort of knit the defense together, coming from the Tiger Cats. This is second down. Fine. Gets a big opening and picks up a first down. It's a key play for the Alouettes. Great play. Penley Mack was down. Great play by Barnes, and I think Grady Cavalier's got a bad call there. I think he got a silly call, a face mask, and I'm sure it's on number 32, Grady Cavalier. <laughs> Joe Barnes, deep in his own end, runs a quarterback draw. Gets a good lead block on Sam Britz and breaks away, and it's Cavnis who will come in and grab that face mask, which is rather silly, right here. No sense. He's got the first down. He's going down, and a big penalty, a big play. Gets Montreal out where they want to be out around their 36. Yoakum and Taylor are doing a pretty good job of hitting each other here, and oh. looks like the heavyweight championship. <laughs> Between two steers. <laughs> Another penalty marker is down on this play. Gaddis took the ball up to around the 41-yard line. 
Well, I'll tell you, the Lions are by no means out of it. Unnecessary penalties could cost them. They may have won right here. We'll find out and be back to you with the score in just a moment. This is the best of Tom T. Hall, a superb album of 20 of his greatest hits. Ravishing Ruby. These are the songs that made Tom T. an international superstar. I remember the year that Clayton Delaney died. Songs of love. I love leaves in the wind. Happy songs. Sneaky snake goes dancing. And beautiful now ballads. It's old dogs and children. Tom T. Hall. Singer, writer, poet, and but most of all, a man who cares. Country. These are 20 oh, of his best. Fast the horses, younger women. I'm really happy about the way this Older album whiskey. turned out, and I hope you'll get one. More money. The best of Tom T. Hall, one of the hot ones from k -Tel. Available at these and other regular k -Tel outlets. BC bench here at Olympic Stadium. Leon Bright now up on his feet. What happened was he said he felt a very sudden tightening in his uh, hamstring and his left leg. This is becoming a family thing. His cousin uh, Larry Key had the same thing happen in the first half. A flag is thrown again as Barnes is being pursued but not taken down. He will take the sidelines being dumped there by Sam Britz. On the previous play, the Lions were called for unnecessary roughness, and uh, those two penalties and the one long gain by Barnes on his first carry of 22 yards have taken it across midfield now to the BC 54-yard line. It's unfortunate we have such a great ball game, Don, and we're getting all these flags now almost on every play. Could be a holding call against Dan Yoakum of Montreal. Montreal Alouettes, number 67. First That's what it is, holding against Yoakum. So, ball comes back 10 yards to the 41, 46 yard line. The down is repeated. It'll be first and 20. Huh. Drew Taylor, number 60, and Dan Yoakum, number 67, have been going at it all night. Off to the right here, we'll see as he tries to put the pressure on, and Yoakum's got his arm wrapped around him a little bit there and gets called for the holding call. Giving a second and 20 situation for the Alouettes. First and 20. First and 20 it is. Richardson pursuing and sacking Joe Barnes with aid from Glenn Jackson. We have two minutes remaining. Now less than two in the third quarter. It is 24-19. Montreal leading the Lions. Penalties have been expensive for British Columbia, as you can see. Close to 100 yards in penalties. The third quarter is not over yet. They throw those flags anymore. They're going to have to get new ones for their next ball game. Yeah, it'll be worn out. Ball now at the 38-yard line. Barnes unloading way deep downfield. And to let it, I think, go through. But he was the closest man to it. Bob Gaddis had been the intended receiver. It goes to third down. 28 yards to go for Montreal. 118 remaining in the third quarter now. Reminder again, we've got baseball tomorrow night on CBC's Major League Baseball 78. Watch for one of two games wherever you live. The Expos, the Dodgers from right here in Montreal, the Blue Jays and the Tigers from Detroit. Leon Bright's gone back in for this expected third down punt from Wally Buono. Bright and Hinton on the punt return team for the Lions. So obviously Leon has worked out his hamstring problem. Buono has been out Kicked by Louis Pasaglia by about 10 yards tonight. Not deep on this occasion. They let it bounce to Hinton. 25-yard line. And 
he's finally taken down with jarring tackle by Doug Smith. In the area of the 32, 47-yard punt and a nine-yard return. Well, I mentioned baseball coming up tomorrow night. We've also got a good ball game for you on Saturday when the Expos meet the Giants at Candlestick Park in San Francisco. So watch for that on Saturday afternoon, August 26, right here on CBC Television. The Giants, one of the teams that Lasorda and the Dodgers, along with the Reds, are watching over their shoulder. Here's Holt. Harry Holt. At good speed for a big man. 4.4 speed. He's out of Arizona. It was met by Tony Proudfoot and Chuck Zayton. At uh, 2.20 at 6.2, he is the inside running back in this BC Lion offense at present. He's had to carry quite a bit of the load with uh, injuries to both Bright and, of course, Larry Key from time to time tonight. <laughs> this is second down. Quick pop to Holt. He goes his way out to the 49-yard line for a Lion first down. Wally Guano there in the tackle. Don, that's the same play that Key broke in that second quarter down near the goal line for 66 yards. This time they had a hold in that running back spot and pitched it out to him. Well, the gun sounds, and at the end of the third quarter, the score is Montreal 24 and the BC Lions 19. Introducing 15,000 miles of protection, 15,000 miles between oil changes, new STP motor oil. Here's the results of one test, a test to determine wear protection. After running STP motor oil for 60,000 miles with oil changes every 15,000, the average wear of the test car's camshaft was so low, it fell within the manufacturer's tolerance specified for brand new cams. New STP motor oil, protection for 15,000 miles. That's extra protection. Well, you're going to get yourself new wheels, and you're wondering what they'll be. Just come on, track it with GMC, get a rally wagon, or a pickup truck, or get a Jimmy Fun machine, and let's go trucking. Everybody's trucking, nothing goes trucking like a GMC. GMC, the truck people from General Motors. I'm a Canadian Pacific shareholder now, Harry. Well, that's good, Arnold. Uh, that gives me a share in the whole company, eh, Harry? Mines, airlines, steel, railway, trucks, forest products, hotels, ships, real estate, petroleum, telecommunications. That's right. The company has a big responsibility to you as a shareholder. Yeah. So now he's working for me. <clears throat> At Canadian Pacific, we believe what we do is important to you. This is Don Chevrier with Russ Jackson and Tom McKee welcoming you to the fourth quarter of what has been an exciting football game. Hope you've enjoyed it so far. The Alouettes lead the Lions 24-19. The ball is at the 49-yard line of British Columbia where they're starting now with the first down. Daggy puts that ball up again, this time out of bounds. Dickie Harris, the closest man to it for Montreal. Looking for Leon Bright. Well, we acknowledge the welcome, certainly, from the people here around the Olympic scoreboard in Montreal. Everybody got the name spelled just perfectly. <laughs> no space there on the key. No real difficult ones there. Now, did you hear that? There's no space on the key. Did you hear that? M-C-K-E-E -E right through. <laughs> Super effort by Al Sharouk. Tough situation there. Tight coverage applied to Al Sharouk. Andy two, Rhino. Two buddies there at UTEC saying something to Sharouk. I'm sure he's saying something like, come back next time and you might catch one. It runs to third down for the Lions from the 49-yard line. They had a bet out in BC when they were both members out there over something and the loser had to shave their hair off and Al Sharouk lost and they shaved him bald out there. Said his mother didn't like it, so he had to grow back. Go buy a toque. <laughs> There's precisely a putting. At the 20-yard line, the run back stopped by.
by Glenn Leonard. Andy Randall brought it out. 44-yard punt by Louis Pisaglia. So the Alouettes will start from their own 20. 65,312 looking on here at the Olympic Stadium tonight. And just starting just about now, I suppose, the Calgary, the Stampeders, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders in tonight's other CFL game. Tomorrow night, Ottawa goes to Hamilton, and Winnipeg will be in Edmonton. I'm sure those Tiger Cats are going to be a lot tougher on the Ottawa Football Club than they were last week with new head coach John Payne rounding them into shape. They made some changes, too. Got some new people in. John O'Leary hits up near the 29-yard line for a gain of... the 24-yard line for a gain of four. Sam Britt's there to meet him. I can never understand how teams let Sam Britt's get away, Russ. I've always been impressed with the way this guy has played middle linebacker. Well, it's one of those things. I'm not sure whether he played out his option in Hamilton, Don, and they let him go or what, but Hamilton did get a pretty good middle linebacker in Ray Nettles from the Toronto Argonauts in that deal with Mike Harris. Yes, they did. Lines for McMahon. Craig Oliver pops McMahon, but not before he had picked up a Montreal first down. Uh, Joe Barnes just continues to impress me. I was hoping he'd go back to the passing game because earlier in the first half he was completing them. And again, under some pretty good pressure here, he moves aside, takes a good look, and brings McMahon back to the ball, away from the defender. And he's been doing that all night. And he's 12 for 18 for 154 yards tonight. But he keeps bringing the receiver back. And that is just excellent quarterbacking. First down, Montreal 35. Barnes rolling, unable to throw, and he's taken down right in front of his bench for a one-yard gain of the 36 by Glenn Jackson. The Alouettes scored 24 points in the first half. They've been shut out so far in this half. The Lions getting a touchdown in a single in the third quarter to narrow that Deficit to 24-19. That's the way it stands right now. Montreal on top by five points. We have 12 minutes and 20 seconds to play. Barnes has only made one completion this half. You saw it a moment or two ago. He'll try again right here. That is incomplete. Oliver came charging up. Well, Frank Oliver, number 17, hadn't tripped himself. He seemed to trip on the artificial turf. He might have picked that ball off. Well, he was there for it. Suddenly the feet went out, and down he went. He cut his legs out from under him. <laughs> Bob Gaddis had been the intended receiver for Montreal. The Alouettes now fall the third down at 10. The Lions are about to get the ball back. punt by Wally Bueno back to the 25-yard line. Look this out. is Hinton. Oh, fine tackle in the open field by Larry Smith cut him down in full flight. He brought it back 16 after a 48-yard punt. So they remain five points apart here. 11-39 to play in the fourth quarter. At Canadian Pacific, we're in business to make a profit. Shh. Some people think profit's a dirty word. <laughs> oh, but we're not ashamed. Profits are what keep us in business. Why, without profits, we couldn't provide the services we do in transportation, in travel, hotels, or telecommunications. Uh, we couldn't continue producing in steel, in wood, and paper, in oil and gas, or mining. Please, not so loud. Uh, sorry. Without profits, we couldn't provide the jobs we do or invest in new enterprises, or even plan for the future. John, take a look at these figures here. So you see, to us at Canadian Pacific, profits serve many useful purposes. Oh. Hello, accounting. It's the tax department. Including paying taxes. Hello. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, yes, uh, we try to be thorough. At Canadian Pacific, we believe what we do is important to you. Got a score from Calgary for you early in the game. The Stampeders have taken a 7-0 lead over the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. And right here, 
24 to 19, the Alouettes lead. The Lions with BC going first down now from their 40 yard line. Taggy 12 for 21 tonight. Sharuk, the rule no catch. He slipped. The defender, Utech, slipped. I don't know, maybe there's some humidity building up on that turf down there. Don, I was just wondering as we watch Al Sharuk go out on a short out, Taggy just put it out there. The defender has already slipped Burrow, and then Sharuk slipped and couldn't get that ball, gotten on the first bounce without the glove. But there maybe is some water on that field. They did water it down before the game. Maybe it just hasn't disappeared and it's getting a little slippery out there as the game goes on. Have to put their skates on. A little early for the morning dew, but nevertheless, it's slippery. Taggy out to Key. And Key runs right into Chuck Zapek, the last man you'd want to encounter out there in that situation. The gain is five yards. It'll go to third down and five line. Well, I think that might show a little bit that Key is not 100%. He's limping off there because in an open field situation, that's exactly what you want to get that back on a linebacker one-on-one. -on -one, and if you can put a little move on him, get that extra five yards for the first down. You don't take a linebacker, especially Chuck Zapek, on head-on when you give away that many pounds and that uh, amount of meanness. It is to be avoided at all costs. Third and five. Vesaglia. One block tonight. It's putted well, though. Bouncing around to Randy Rhino. Waiting for the Lions to get a bit too close. They did. Uh, Rhino is ground into a no-yards penalty. Now we'll try to get a few more and settles for a gain of about three at the 28-yard line. Well, the over-anxious tackler is coming down. Got taken in by the hesitation of Rhino. Well, we see this just encroaching on that five-yard area. John Blaine, number, number 68. 68. John Blaine, backup offensive lineman, got caught in there by Rhino, and that adds 10 yards to this return. And Brits made the tackle. So they move it up to the 41. The first down Montreal from there. Ten and a half minutes to play in the game, and it's 24-19 for the Alouettes. That's Montreal's best starting position in this half. Our statistician Doug Kelcher tells me. Peyton starts. Here's the long throw by Barr. It is for Gannis. He's got it. He's been on the money. Don Joe Barnes has been on the money to Gaddis a couple of times. He couldn't hold one off his fingertip. This time working on Ken Hinton, number 18. Barnes got it out to him, and he made the reception and has put Montreal in good field position, especially with that five-point difference. And even a field goal would move them up that eight points and force a two-point conversion by the BC Lions if they did score. It was a gain of 46 yards to the 24 of the Lions. A big series coming up right here for the Alouette offense and a test for the line defense. 9.25 remaining. Delay again. Blair Shallow, the referee, has called three of those tonight. And Joe Barnes is really upset. I'm not sure whether he was upset at the players for not getting there or just the fact that he himself didn't get the playoff in time because you just don't take that type of penalty at this stage of the ballgame. Could be a very costly five yards back to the 29. Here's Don Sweet. He, of course, has the ability to put the Alouettes beyond the seven-point range. And this drive should bog down. It's first and 15 now. thrown after Dallariva made the catch. Cavness is really upset. The Lions are being called for something down there. Necessary roughness. Number 10, John Beaton came in. Dallariva at ground level goes down and catches this pass. Has no trouble getting off the line of scrimmage. Beaton giving him lots of room. You can see almost five yards. Della Riva's on the ground. 
and you're not supposed to, even though a lot of fans might object to that, when the player's on the ground, you're expected to go up and tag him, not what you call spearing using that helmet, and it's a good rule. It does protect ball players. Again, from ground level, you'll see the catch. He's definitely down, and the official felt that number 10, John Beaton, had the opportunity to prevent the hit as he made it. He didn't give much of a hit, though, but he did make contact. Almost had the ball in his hands. It was aimed for Larry Smith. It's going to be second down from the nine now. 8.49 remaining. Well, Frank Oliver, a graduate of Kentucky, has had a couple of opportunities late in this ball game for interceptions. Just not able to hang on. Just at the end with Barnes rolling out here to the left. Delivers that ball well, but Oliver steps in front and almost had the Lions back in good position. That is battled away. Oh, that's for Queen. It's all right. Coming up under that camera unit down there in the end zone. I say he's all right. Still down. He's getting up. Dan Arriva went in the other way. He's all right. Well, Canadian professional football will continue after this message. At one time, Canadian Pacific was primarily owned outside this country in Britain, in the United States, and in a few other countries. In those days, Canadians were low man on the totem pole. But today, that's all changed. Today, over 70% of Canadian Pacific is owned by Canadians. And that certainly looks much better to us. At Canadian Pacific, we believe what we are is important to you. Eight minutes and 25 seconds remaining as the Alouettes are on third down. The nine-yard line, Don Sweet in position for a field goal attempt. That could give them a lead of eight points. This will come from the 16-yard line. Jerry Dottilio, number nine, kneels to hold for Sweet. They're not quite ready yet. Changing football. Well, even the ball apparently is wet. So there is some moisture out there that has caused the players to slip and slide. There's Sweet getting his second field goal of the night. There it is, 27-19, a lead of eight points for the Alouettes. Eight minutes and eight seconds remaining. The last time the Don Sweet kicked the field goal, the BC Lions elected to have them kick off, and they did not get the ball back to the 35-yard line where they had the option of starting with a first down. They are electing again to have them kick off, which is an unusual situation as we've seen this year. Most teams are electing to take the ball on their 35-yard line. Well, the Lions have trouble winning here. The Alouettes are 7-1-0 and against them in Montreal. This game, of course, is BC's first appearance at the Olympic Stadium. Overall, the Alouettes have won 10, lost six, and tied one against the Lions playing in Vancouver and here in Montreal. Peter Dallariva talking to Coach Scanella there, and I'm sure Peter's glad to be back, and Coach Scanella glad to have him back. You talk about their first appearance at the Olympic Stadium, Don. I understand a few of them came for a tour of the facility today. Frank Landy was down here and got lost. Somebody said, well, it's just like a country boy to get lost in a big city like this, in a big stadium like this. You can get lost here very easily. I've been here, I don't know, 20 times. Toronto Argonauts, Saskatchewan Rough Riders, coming out from Taylor Field, Regina, on Sunday, August 27th, right here at CBC. Join us for that game. That was Leon Bright chugging it out across the 50-yard line to give the Lions some good field position. Jim Burrow brought him down. He brought it back 32 yards. Led by Don Whitman, Ernie Afaganis, Bob Rose. 
and Taylor Field for that game for you on Sunday afternoon. And we're fortunate again tonight to have Doc Nielsen with us doing the isolation work from that crew, and I'm sure he'll be busy back with that Western crew. First down. Taggy out to Bryant. In a crowd, can't get away, and Clifton Alapa rides him down at the 54. That'll limit the game to three yards. Surprised that Jimmy Young maybe has been shook up a little bit more than we expected when he got hit very hard in that first half and then was offside or legal procedure because in situations like this they like to go to Young and he has not been back in the ball game as I recall in the second half. I don't believe he has. Taggy and a fine reception made right there by Leon Bryant of the 40 yard line to get the Lions an important first down. Dickie Harris, number 18, made the stop and helps him out. Bright limping slightly as he comes back with that lion huddle. That's He'll putting it, left. That's putting it mildly, saying he's limping slightly. Noticeably. Slowed by Cornell, then he got help from Alapa and Harris, and they forced hold out of bounds around the 33 yard line. It'll be a gain of seven. The Lions got into trouble early. They fell behind 14 0 and then rallied. It was a big exciting offense under Jerry Tuggy, and have really never been that far away. The worst was 24 to 11 at halftime. They've come back well in this half. From the end zone with a blitz on, Zapek number 76 coming in in a man to man situation, forcing the middle linebacker. To get out there and cover that back coming out of the backfield, the number 31 hold has been impressive in this second outing with the BC Lions. That's Key popping through for a first down. It should be at the 29 of Montreal. Well, we're going to perhaps, perhaps see the excitement that the two point conversion rule can offer. Because oh, yeah. the Lions trail by eight. We've got lots of time left with the if they do score quickly and they will get that ball back. And Don, we should mention that in that game in Calgary, Calgary has gone ahead 14-0 now over the Saskatchewan Rough Riders with their new head coach. And certainly I'm sure he's not treading softly on the sidelines. Baggy fires it out for Sharouk. And he's finally made a catch after several close calls. Around the 22-yard line, another seven-yarder. That is his second catch overall tonight, Al Sharouk. 5-23 remaining. The Lions pressing the Alouettes. Montreal has got what appears to be right now a rather shaky 27-19 lead. First down. Well, we get a decision for the coach with maybe a yard or more to go. Will you take the three points and hope that you can get that ball back and score the touchdown? Here's Rap asking, how far do we have to go? It would appear to be about a yard and a half. And he's going for it right now. Big play, Don. This could be the entire story right here. Four minutes and 27 seconds left. Watch that option play again. Here he comes. Here it is. Key. He's got the first down. And then some. Down to the 16-yard line where Jim Burrow finally cut him down. You call that well from up here, Russ. It's easier from up here. <laughs> Taggy just taking this. This one wasn't run as well as the one in the first half going the other way. Taggy was forced deep into the backfield, and Key takes this pitch out, and it's just his speed that gets him outside UTEC number eight, who'd come up to force the play because he started about six or seven yards deep in the backfield. There he is, four short of 100 yards on the night. Larry Key. And 
is hauled in by Leon Bright at the nine yard line. So that's a gain of seven. They're going to be second and three. Don, I like the patience of Jerry Taggy. He knows they have to score, but he's taking his time. He's not trying to get all in one play. If that is required, then he's going to do it. On isolation, we see Bright going out here. Just a quick out to the wide side of the field. The ball was delivered before he actually made his cut. Just a perfect throw, but Taggy is showing patience and experience here. Holt, first down, touchdown. And the Lions are right back into it. Trailing the Alouettes by two points. This is going to provide us with a great finish with 3.17 left. Here's the scoring play by Holt. Well, from the eye, Holt comes in from that fullback spot. Just a straight spin and a handoff. And Gordon Judges, number 75, gets taken down to the inside. Zapek, who is fighting in there, and Carl Cornell was completely out of the play. He came back against the grain a little bit as he broke through that line. And here we go for the two-point conversion. They will try for two from the five-yard line. It is no goal. Leon Bright covered by three Alouette defenders. So the Alouettes cling to a 27-25 lead. Don, I'm surprised if you're going to try a play like that, you don't give Bright some room because you have the opportunity of placing that ball anywhere between the hash marks on the five-yard line. And I thought if they wanted to run a roll-up, they might have placed it on the left hash mark. However, there is this consolation. The Lions are still within field goal range of taking the lead. There is just over three minutes, 317 remaining. It's got an exciting football game. Starting with the lightning quick interception for a touchdown by Jim Burrow. The block kick that led to a second one. The recovery by the Lions and their dominance over the Alouettes, outscoring Montreal in the second half, 14 to 3 so far. They went 51 yards in nine plays for that touchdown. Well, I think the Alouettes are going to have to go to Joe Barnes' arm because he's been successful. He put in mothballs in the third quarter a little bit, and it came out in the fourth quarter, but they've been successful moving the ball that way, and you can't get too conservative at this point. You must get first downs. After this kickoff, there's going to be pressure on the Alouettes to keep the ball kill the clock move downfield against the Lions protect that two-point lead Rhino lets it get away from him into the end zone he's going to give up one he's tagged by Sam Britz coming through and it's one point on the kickoff Don do you second guess on that two-point conversion now after a play like that <laughs> I don't think Vic Rapp knew this was coming, yes. this kickoff. <laughs> well, Rhino did the wise thing. He There's sure no did. Question. A lot of people would try and run that ball out, but Randy Rhino, who returned those, realized that rather than get out to that five-yard line and give them field position if they don't move the ball and maybe one first down moves them to field goal position to take the lead, better to be one point ahead than one point down. 27-26 it is. 35-yard line. The Alouettes will start right there. First down. What a back draw by Barnes is five, ten yards, and a first down. A gain of 14. So we get down to the final two minutes and 54 seconds. These teams are one point apart. Don't go away. You hear a lot of talk these days about the high cost of finding and producing new sources of energy. And at Canadian Pacific, through our subsidiary Pan-Canadian Petroleum, we're investing heavily in exploration and development of new energy resources. But we're also working to turn undeveloped sour gas deposits into useful production. We're actively investigating thermal coal reserves, untouched for many years. We're looking at new ways to economically recover oil previously lost from existing wells. 
Although it's only one of our activities at Canadian Pacific, development of unused energy resources in oil, natural gas, and thermal coal takes a lot of our energies these days. At Canadian Pacific, we believe what we do is important to you. It is first down for the 49-yard line. Alouettes trying to hold off the BC Lions, leading 27 to 26. No room for John O'Leary. We have a new score from Calgary for you in the second quarter now. It is 15 to 10. Calgary leads Saskatchewan, so the Riders are coming back. Okay. Two yards and nine carries tonight, and no gain on that one. Number 77, Louis Richardson from Florida State, 6'5, 250 pounds. The big man on that defensive front four does a pretty good job of stacking up O'Leary. Second down for Barnes. No good. Then a penalty marker's been thrown. Take it a bad penalty or two right here. Thomas, the first one is probably going to be interference on number 10 beaten, and then it's probably going to be an unsportsmanlike conduct call. And let's hope we can see that one again. It is a pass interference call. Kavna's in there protesting again. Now he's the defensive captain out there. Interference against BC. Disqualification against BC. First down. Well, I'm not sure who's been disqualified, Russ, but somebody's been thrown out of there. Well, Joe Barnes was just given too much time here. He goes back here. He waits. He waits. He waits. He finally moves up into the pocket. Throws the ball to Dallariva, and we get the interference call as the player. It looked like number 10 came over top. And number 10, who came back and pushed the official, is being ejected. John Beaton, and this could hurt them because Carlson has been out all this second half. Beaton replaced him. And the other defensive back they have is Jimmy Young, whom we haven't seen in this second half. So I don't know who's going to be playing in that defensive backfield. Well, that's a tough time to lose your cool. BC Lions in trouble now. The ball is at the 19-yard line. They've walked up 25 yards on the pass interference call and the disqualification. And Gerald Day has gone off now, too, so I'm not sure who was disqualified or who was put out or both of them. Yeah, Beaton was sent out by mistake. Now he's coming back in. He got the interference call. It was probably Gerald Day that got removed from the game. Again, a weak area for them with linebackers missing. We'll try and pick out who is replacing him. First down Montreal, the Lion 19. Two minutes and 17 seconds left. Ken Starch. Roll back after getting a couple around the 17-yard line. <laughs> Well, we mentioned how penalties had hurt the Lions earlier. They really may have hurt them on this occasion as one of the BC linemen is down. Don, we've got John Beaton playing that linebacker spot now. And number three, Hal Lund is in at the defensive backfield spot, replacing Beaton, who was replacing Carlson. So that secondary and linebacking core of the BC Lions is certainly in desperate shape right now, not downgrading the particular play of someone like Lund. Now they've lost Doug Seymour for one play. He went down, the trainer came out. Now a flag has been thrown. I think he Somebody has said something. I think Seymour turned around and said something as he was going off. And he's not conduct against BC number 61. Yes, it's Doug Seymour as he was walking off, had something to say. Objectionable conduct. And you're not gonna win ball games doing it this way. They might have talked themselves right out of a win here in the Olympic Stadium. Blair Shallow, I'll tell you, has taken no nonsense tonight, the referee. 
Seymour went down to shake it up, and Rapp is really telling him a few facts of life late in the football game. He would not go out. He was sent out as the rule requires. Then he turned and said those choice words to the official. The ball now is at the eight-yard line. It's first down, Montreal. fell and will be stopped right there outside the 10. Very fortunate to hang on to the ball as he slipped just as the handoff was being made from number seven, Joe Barnes. Two minutes, 11 seconds left. 27-26. The Alouettes leading the Lions. Don, this brings back memories of the game that the BC Lions played against the Ottawa Rough Riders in Ottawa last year. If Montreal is forced to go for the three points where they marched down the field and won that ball game on the last play of the game. And I know Frank there still has all sorts with that one. Barnes now gets a charge. Needs some help. Barnes take it down around the three or four yard line. And he's Joe Barnes may have been hurt. Barnes has gone down to the right side. It was the right shoulder, you recall, that he injured last year in a game right here against Toronto. And he's covering his head, writhing in pain. That was a similar play to what happened last year, almost identical. It was, Tom. We'll see it again right here. I think he landed on the right shoulder, jammed it somehow. Here he gets. He gets good pursuit. He Ooh. gets chased out of there by number 63, doing a good job chasing after him. And he gets around the first man here, but then right. as he goes out, he seems to come down on the hip or the spine area, and it was not, I don't think, the original hit, but the way he fell. And there's a concerned head coach, and Larry Lawrence, number 17, who was here in training camp, went down to Pittsburgh at their training camp, was saying two training camps is too much mentally could be forced into action and it looks like something to do with the right leg. Yep, that's leg. It's a leg injury, not the shoulder, as Barnes gets help across the field. In comes big number 53, Doug Smith, to aid him. He advanced the ball down to the three-yard line where it's going to be third <laughs> down when play resumes. They have a minute and 41 left. Here he is, getting all tangled up as he fell. Right. Just one of those things that happens. Me. But Rick Golf, number 63, did a pretty good job of pursuing him once he forced him out of the pocket, preventing him from going in for the touchdown. And a standing ovation for Joe Barnes from many of this crowd of 65,000 here at the Olympic Stadium on their feet, applauding him. You start to wonder about a football player like that. Is he going to be hurt a lot because he did get hurt last year? He has had many injuries this year. And now we have Sweden here trying to increase this lead to four points. The attempt comes from the 11-yard line, a sharp angle, but he's got it. Don Sweet is three for three. And the LOS have increased their lead to 30 to 26. A margin of four points as Tom goes over to check on the condition of Joe Barr. A lot of people concerned around that bench, and here we go with a typical ending to a great football game. 30 to 26, and a touchdown required. Tom, what's happening with Joe? Joe Barr is just saying here that uh, where the pain is on the outside of his left knee there, so it looked as if he might have twisted it or Maybe it went the wrong way it should go when he uh, when he fell on that play. All right, Terry Bailey hauled that pass in for the Lions up to the 49-yard line. They got a minute 33 left. And we're in for some kind of a finish. It's been some kind of a game so far. I'm expecting this crowd to erupt, which will prevent Taggy from calling those plays at the line of scrimmage. Taggy steps up. Balls across the center field stripe at the 54. He wanted, to, he wanted to throw that ball, but he realized it was about four yards over the line of scrimmage. So instead, he wisely fell down halfway to a first down or better. It'll be second down and four. We're still working Joe on Joe Barnes. Tom? Still working on Joe Barnes down here. He doesn't seem to be as, in as much pain as he was before. That could be good news. Is Larry Key. 
That is a first down for the British Columbia Lions. Out of bounds at the 47 and a half yard line. With a minute 14 remaining. And a good move. Good presence of mind. They had to run four plays in a row from the line of scrimmage. Key got out of bounds that time. Stopping the clock and allowing the Lions to get back in the huddle and get straightened around. Putting some freezing on that leg now. Saglia in there as a receiver could not hang on to it. Was hit by Chuck Zepek at the ball top three. As Proudfoot with Bulmar heavily taped and bandaged now. 108 remaining. 30 26 for Montreal. Second and 10, BC at the 47 and a half yard line of the Alouettes. It goes to third down. The Lions really haven't got much choice. With a minute or two left, they've got to go for it. Well, Taggy going for it all here. We talked about his patience this time. He tried to get it there. Al Sharuk was being forced to the inside. Just didn't get the ball outside enough as Proudfoot, number 23, was right with him. And with a minute and two to go, the ball game rests on this next play in terms of the BC Lions continuing their drive. And there's Joe Barnes' knee. That is picked That's up. Larry Utah. Well, Jerry Taggy trying to go to the outside with this. Not too much pressure. He got it out over number 77, Junior Ayu. And Utech just stepped in front of Holt, number 31, and took off downfield with a good return of 37 yards. And it was Holt, number 31, showing that speed we talked about coming back and pulling Utech down. But a big turnaround after BC had come from a long way back. Larry Lawrence into quarterback, the LOS, with instructions from Joe Scanala to keep it on the ground and hang out of the ball as O'Leary does as he's rolled back around the 30-yard line. That takes the time down to 46 seconds. Joe Barnes, that knee now, in case you nice, resting with the leg on the helmet at the Montreal bench. Of course, is through for this night. The question is, how much activity is Barnes going to miss in weeks to come? That interception by Larry Utek was a timely one. It was his first of the 1978 season and probably saved the Alouette's victory. And against his former teammates of last year. Again, delay of game. Too long to put the ball in the play. That's the fourth time it's been called by referee Blair Shallow. Larry Lawrence was telling me before the game that he went to the Pittsburgh training camp after going through the full training camp with the Alouettes, and he said, physically, I could take it, but he said, mentally, it's almost an impossibility. He said he can't understand how people can go to those two training camps as we hear the call of too long in the huddle by the official. I think one's enough for anybody per season. <laughs> well, as a quarterback, the physical part of it would be acceptable. Yeah. Uh, being called for too long in the huddle with this time remaining means that they do lose the down, and it will be a third down situation. The time will not start, of course, until the ball is snapped now. And they're not taking any chance of putting that ball. They're going to run a play. Well, they can't use all the time. But I guess they don't want to block punt or anything like that. 24 seconds, third down. is taken now by Sam Brits of the Lions have 20 seconds remaining. 
Well, they got one more crack at the cat. The clock won't start till they put the ball in play. There's no need for them to come directly to the ball. They can go to the huddle. It's been a wild and blowing night here at the Olympic Stadium in Montreal. 30 to 26 for the Alouettes. And it's been a long one, too, Don. Almost three hours. Some of the features we hope to bring to you and talk about, especially that BC Lions Stadium, we might not be able to get to you. And the fan reply may have to wait until next time. Is Taggy stepping up, unloading. It is complete to Leon Bright at the 50-yard line with 12 seconds remaining. Well, Taggy pulled one off in Ottawa that you mentioned. It was indeed a miraculous finish. This one tonight would be even more remarkable if he can do it. Lying down on one knee downfield. That is Louis Pasaglia, who was in as a receiver on that last play, and uh, he may have wanted to make sure the clock was stopped. Otherwise, the coach would have a heart attack because he's walking off limping, being the field goal kicker in the front. <laughs> he must give Louis a longer pair of pants or a longer sock. Something's got to match up a little better. Shorter leg. <laughs> Twelve seconds left. On the sidelines, it is no good. It bounced in front of Al Shurok with six seconds remaining now. 